Wall of attraction. That is correct, Chin. Mm -hmm. We're just having a little conversation. Chin, MJ, and myself on this lovely, what is it, Tuesday? Yes. That's right, Tuesday. And I will be (laughs) with Chin in San Francisco on Thursday. Can't believe that that bad boy's already coming up. Cobb's Comedy Club, man. I love it there. One of my favorite places. Most nervous I've ever got before a show was there because that's where Robin Williams did a lot of his stuff. Like all the time, and they had pictures of him on the walls. Like it, I grew up on, you know, yeah. Mrs. Doubtfire, Robin Williams. So it was intense and amazing, right? Yeah, he was one of the best of all time. So they had pictures of him everywhere. My mom's obsessed with Robin Williams. She actually cried when he died. Oh, and uh, I mean, like a lot of people, God bless them. And then, yeah, I remember seeing that before I walked out. I was like, oh shit, this is Robin Williams' stage, you know? Yeah. So I'm excited to go back. Different show, different animal this time. I'm so excited. There are uh, barely any tickets left. TFATK.com right now as you're listening to this. And then the following Friday, I'm in Long Beach, California. I'm having my peeps down there, too. I got a bunch of friends and family coming to town that weekend. So Long Beach, the shop force will be strong. I actually have a good amount of friends going to that one, too. Long Beach? Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. You sent me uh, the comp names of your friends going to San Francisco. Yeah. I mean, it looked like a goddamn kung fu movie. <laughs> I know. I was like, don't laugh, dude. <laughs> I they was like, have, uh, all right. They all have the same last name, but they're completely different. Oh, yeah? They're not yeah. related? No. That's another thing about Vietnamese people. They're all like, like 90% of their names are Nguyen. Bro, did you see? 90%. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I'm going to fuck up because he's, he's Chinese. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I was going to go on a, something I saw today reading the news. The guy who owns that, it's like second behind Amazon. It's like worth $400 billion. Zappos? Zappos. Yeah. Okay. I, no. Is it Zappos? You know what I'm talking about? Mm, same I know he, there's an But they had like a company like retreat or whatever. Uh-huh. And he had, he basically, the owner, who's I think he's the third or maybe he's like the 14th rich man in the world. He's worth like $34 billion. Chinese fellow or something like that, but... They had their annual like company party, and mm-hmm. he did a whole Michael Jackson. Like he came out on this huge stage, dressed as Michael Jackson, and did a whole Michael Jackson number. They made all the employees do it with him. Was it cool or was it weird? It was terrible. <laughs> but everyone has to be like, yeah, because yeah. the bots. Can you imagine? <laughs> like that's your company party. It's, it's either so- awesome or it's a yeah. shit show. It sounds like it could be fun, but then when you see it, you can tell like everyone's like, oh, oh. god damn it. Like, they must have rehearsed it a ton. He had a whole get up and everything. Um, but oh, but where I was going with this, I, was, I didn't mean to go with this Chinese guy who's rich as <laughs> shit dressing up as Michael Jackson, which is awesome. We were talking about a while ago Koreans in professional sports. Mm-hmm. There's a kicker oh, on yeah. the San Diego Chargers yep. who, out of all the schools in the world, went to Georgia Southern, which is a predominantly black school. Okay. And he won the Ray Guy Award for the best kicker in the nation. So last night, they brought him up because his first kick ever in the NFL was to beat the Denver Broncos in his first game ever kicking the NFL. Yeah. They bring him in. He nails it to the uprights. Young I'm, Goku. And I was root. And listen, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a big uh, – obviously, I'm from fucking Denver, so I'm the biggest Broncos fan in the world. Uh-huh. However, first Korean-born NFL player in 30 years. Um, so – I always want my Broncos to win, but when they told me when I found out his story, and then I went, I like looked him up. I'm yeah. like, oh shit! I'm like, I'm rooting for this guy. I like, <laughs> I want him to make it. I don't want him to win because it would tie the game. They would go to overtime. Yeah. Then hopefully the Broncos win. Then, but I was like, God, I hope he makes it. How badass is that? First Korean-born NFL player in 30 years, Ray Guy Award. Georgia. If you know anything about Georgia Southern, it's such a fucking predominantly African American school. It's not mm-hmm. even funny. He's a Korean kicker for Georgia Southern. <laughs> Five foot nine. Five foot nine. Yeah. Ray Guy Award winner. So, which is you're the best. That means you're the best kicker in the in the nation. I heard like, he won yeah. constantly all the awards, everything. Just a place. beast. Yeah, he's like the best. So kicker. then his first kick ever in the NFL as a Korean. Yeah, as a Korean. <laughs> as a fu- as doesn't matter what uh, ethnicity is. As a Korean, homeboy kicks it through the uprights, but. My guy called a timeout. The head coach of the Denver Broncos called a timeout. Vance Joseph, who was uh, who was the cornerback coach when I was on the team. He's he was a players coach. Everyone loved him, so he's okay. the head coach of the Broncos now. So right at right before he goes kicking, and all coaches they call it ice and the kicker. He calls timeout. 
Homeboy kicked it straight. I mean, pfft, what? Yeah. That Korean Han was powerful. Just <laughs> kick you straight through the uprights. And then they call a timeout. Then he has to re-kick him. Like, ah, oh, fuck. I hope he makes this one. I'm like, he's going to make it. It was on its way to make it, but it got blocked. Oh, damn. Oh, they lost the game. It got blocked by someone? Boom? Yeah. Oh, Not right. Which typically isn't his fault. It's the O-line's fault. Yeah. If it's a low ball, it's his fault. But his, old, his uh, the, the, the line fucked up. The guy came right through the middle, which is ridiculous. And blocked. This big, fat black guy blocked it. <laughs> and again, I'm a Broncos fan, but I want homeboy to make it. Yeah. Have and you that's... seen this trick shot that he did? No. Oh, He's my, my favorite trick. So I thought now. this was fake, but check this out. Jesus. Do you see that? <laughs> Hold up. Did you do a flip? He did a flip. Check it out again. Let me full screen this. So he spins the ball, runs to it, kicks oh it. Oh my and God. He flips. No shit. This guy's make made for this. He was made for kicking. That's racist. <laughs> Super racist. And have you heard his voice? No. He sounds like, because he's, he's, he moved here when he was like 12 or something. So, he so white as fuck. There's, no, there's, there's a lot of Korean in him. Oh, right? is there? But Even there's better. also a southern accent, so he has like a broken Korean Southern American accent. <laughs> what is he, the best guy of all time <laughs> no, in the no. NFL? I'm rooting for the guy too, dude. And he plays for our Los Angeles Chargers. That's amazing. I'm from LA. Yeah. Well, been here long enough. You know? Yeah. I was rooting for him though. Super rooting for him. I didn't know he actually played his first game. So, well, does the, Ki- do those so games the, count? the way the kickers work? So there's 32 teams in the league. Think about it. You have to be one of the best 32 kickers in the world to make it. And then at that, a lot of kickers, they're, they're old. They're, they, they never leave. So to get that gig is so goddamn – you have to be so, so good at kicking the footballs through the upright to get that job. So mm-hmm. for him to get it – and I would imagine – was he drafted? Can you look if he was drafted? Look up his name. Let's see if he was drafted because even for a kicker to get drafted, you have to be a royal beast. Dude. Homeboy from Tampa Bay who just who got cut this year Tempo. was a second round pick, yeah. which is crazy for a kicker. I think Sebastian uh, Janikowski was the next, like he was a first round draft pick. Oh, this is when he's trying. Hold up. Seven things you need to know about Young, young Ho Koo. Mm hmm. Let's see these seven things. I mean, I'm a fan of this fucking oh, dude. There's though. that trick shot thing. All right. So you can do trick shots. Got it. That's racist. Where's that list start? Um, Maybe that first. Oh, here we thing. go. So let's see. Key moved to the United States when he was 12 in football. Helped him acclimate. Okay. First off, his first name is pronounced Young Way. Wow. Oh. Georgia Southern was hmm. one of just two schools to offer coup. So what's the other school? Oh, James Madison University, uh, which aren't big schools at all. He was named MVP his senior year. Hold up. Oh, that's high school. Yeah. All right, keep going. Sounds like Koo picked up a Southern twang. That's not a coincidence. I told you that. (laughs) Koo was part of the uh, Georgia Southern team that upset Florida, except he almost blew it. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Now he's playing in a city with the largest Korean community in the United States. An estimated 200,000 Korean immigrants live in the Los Angeles area. Did you know that, Jen? Now I do. Boom. If he does uh, go on to become NFL star, oh my God, yeah. If if, if he goes like like Jeremy Lin, yeah, the Lin Sanity. I, my brother and I bought Lin Sanity jerseys. We wore Nick jerseys for God's sakes of a Korean guy. Two white boys, white as fuck. Hey, Jeremy Lin is Chinese. He is? Taiwanese or Chinese? Yeah, he's not Korean. No, ain't that a bitch? I, I know. <laughs> Well, Jeremy Lin, Lin, that doesn't sound yeah, Korean. It's Chinese. I'm getting Chinese or Taiwanese, and they hate when you make that Sorry. mistake. No, me. Oh, You've been yeah. just saying Chinese or Taiwanese, but oh, yeah. oh, I'll, I'll figure it out later. Um, what else um, did I say? You guys are internet impersonators. Oh, that's Your it. new favorite kicker. Yeah, he's my favorite kicker. One of my favorite players now. I'm rooting for him. Cool. Kicking's a tough gig. I'm just like I can draft. do it with this Han. Yeah, does it say did he get drafted or was he a free agent? Um, stick with the Chargers. What I do on the Chargers website? Uh, it says sign with the Chargers, but yeah, I think they just picked him up. So draft. You, um... So that means he was he was on drafted. Okay, rookie. But does it say keep going down? Does it say here? Keep going. Biography, college, personal. Sign with the Chargers may. Became program's first. Oh, he's All-American. Wow. Finalist for the Lou Grazo Award. So the Ray guy's for the punter. My bad. Okay. 
Um, first team all Sun Belt. Yeah, it doesn't say. It sounds like he wasn't drafted, though. Okay. But still, super stud. We're rooting for you. We actually need to get a, a Young Hoku jersey in here. <laughs> That should Young be the way. first jersey we put yeah, in. Yeah, Young Way. Young Way. Young Way. MJ's right. That, we should get a jersey and hit frame it. That would be sick, right? <laughs> Fuck yeah. And then he gets cut like three games later for missing all the field goals. Koreans Still will take him now. They're going to boost. If he does well at all, he's going to have so much support from the Korean community. Like beyond you, you, what you can imagine. He's we going Sizzler. Korean talk shows, everything. Yeah. He'll, everything. I mean, there's none here, but yeah, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, nah, he'll be Fly huge to Korea for a Korea. little bit. Yeah, come back here. That's so cool, man. I thought that was an interesting story. I thought of you when I saw that. Obviously, because you guys are both Korean. <laughs> it's a very interesting, though. In the NFL, the mm-hmm. kicker. I, that's the thing. And I, I, I remember this story, but I'm thinking a lot of people in sports usually make fun of the kicker. But it's, it's a pretty. Not in the NFL. Okay, good. And then I felt, I mean, they win and lose games like a motherfucker. So, I mean, you know, the all-time leading scorers are usually kickers. Venetary, you know, there's a lot of Mason Crosby for Green Bay Packers, all-time leading scorer, Packers history. So they, they have a big role. And then I felt, too, it's, if you have a good kicker, they're priceless, man. Super priceless. So you're not really making fun of them because they win and lose your games. What about when you played? Did you have a kicker? Did you guys make fun of him? <laughs> I, I, I had two of the best kickers in the world. I had a uh, guy named uh, Thorpe, who was our punter, who was uh, up for the 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 award, same the Lou Graza award. Uh, so I had Mason Crosby, who's Green Bay Packers all time leading scorer. Wow, who was ridiculous. Who I think he won the Lou Graza award, and then uh, the, up for the Ray Guy award was our kicker Thorpe, who was a beast too. So yeah, you really make fun of him. You just. You, you look at them a little different because they don't go through the same grind. Yeah. Like, they don't get beat up. But they're so important, especially if they're good. So. So. <laughs> you don't make fun of them. If they're good, you don't make fun of them. If they suck, you know, and they're, they're just, I don't know. They, they're a different type of personality. A lot of them come, a lot of them are soccer players who, for a reason, wanted to join the football team. So they're just, they don't have that. Because think about it. So in all over the world, soccer is a badass sport. Football. Football, and, mm-hmm. you know, if you go to England, Dublin, all all over, football is a bad sport. In America, it's it's getting there, but it's not. Like usually, you played soccer because you couldn't do anything else. Here, that's the way it works here. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, because it's the same season as football. So you get some guys who would come over from that. To, they're just a little softer. There's, it's different. Let me it's ask you different. this: when you, you guys had like parties and stuff, right? Football team, all ch- hanging out, drinking and stuff. Did the kicker usually go to those parties too, or was it? Um. Yeah, Cro- I mean Crosby liked to party. Okay, <laughs> Cro- and he was awesome. You know, and he's one of the best players on the team, so he could come. All right. And cool. then Thorpe had a group of friends like Ben Carpenter, um, Holtz, uh, Hubbard. Got all these names that hit me now. So he had like his crew, and they were like one of the funnest crews to hang out with. Oh, sweet. They're all nerds, <laughs> but they were fun to hang out with. Like they were the smartest guys on the team. Okay, we had some smart fucking dudes on the team. Yeah. Yeah, that's one cool. thing I miss about football, just the whole the locker room and the like guys and yeah. stuff like that. But I, again, I I get a little bit of that when I go to the comedy store. I'm there with all my friends in the back there. Yeah, you said so that before. Team atmosphere, you know. It's cool. That you still I'm, have I'm it. going on uh, Tom Segura's podcast, him and his wife's podcast. After this today at nice. I think two thirty. Your mama's house. Your mama's house. I know. That's Sweet. Cool. I know. I love those guys. Mm-hmm. Love, love those guys. Tom was the, actually the first guy. Like, in, obviously, Callan's the first guy who told me I could do comedy, but Tom was the first, like, outside of Callan, right? Because Callan's like a big brother to me. So when Callan says something, I take it with a grain of salt. I'm like, yeah, you're my biggest fan. So, of course, you think I can do anything. So I'm always super skeptical. But still, he gives me the support. But Tom was the first guy, like, outside of family who saw me do a set at the Laugh Factory and called me after. I was like, you can do this, man. I was like, what? He's like, you can do this. Nice, you just man. keep working. I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of guys you can do this. And it means the world. Of course. I mean, it's That's that awesome. small kind of help where you're like, what? Yeah. So I'm a ride or die for Tom now. Sweet, man. Yeah, it's cool. I man. like Tom more now. <laughs> yeah, I love Tom. Love Tom. Is a set at, yeah, a set at the Laugh Factory. I haven't been in the Laugh Factory in a while. I'm always doing, I just, the, the comedy stores where, you know, I don't know. Yep. I love them all, but I guess I'm doing Laugh Factory. But it's Long Beach. I've never been there. It's a different animal, but still. I heard it's really nice, too. It's supposed to be. From an Uber driver that I talked to, it's supposed to be like a newer thing, or did they rebuild it or something? Mm, I'm not all, sure. All over there, because it's like Long Beach, so there's like the aquarium over there, restoration hardware, like um, 
what do you call them, outlet. Mm -hmm. So there's that giant restoration. If you're in the house, his restoration hardware is like the shit. So they have like their outlet there where you get deals. Even a restoration hardware deal isn't great. But um, they, so they're building all sorts of stuff over okay. there. Okay. So I might, who knows? Could be cool. I heard it's beautiful. Beautiful, huh? We haven't really had any bad club experiences. No, they've actually been all awesome. Some some way crazier awesome than others, though. Like New Zealand, that theater was freaking beautiful. That was nuts. Yeah, so. can't remember all of them, but there's some theaters I was just blown away. I'll send you pictures, like, uh, dude, nuts. It was like because Shin gets there before me to do sound check and go over everything. <laughs> I'm like, how is it? I'm like, nuts. Send me pictures, like, Jesus. Yeah, freaking New huge cool. and beautiful. How about that billboard? Yeah, we're up in Northern Cal. You didn't know that? So cool. I had no idea. No, I guess they're all over up in Northern Cal over Calusa. Yeah, Calusa Casino, it said. Yeah, that's where that's I'm right. at, Calusa. Calusa. I don't, tickets aren't on sale yet, but I'm there, I think, November 3rd. But then Bobby Lee's there in October, and then Bert is there in November or December. I, Bert's there in December. He's after me. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's Bobby Lee, October. I'm in November. Bert Kreischer in uh, December. But tickets should go on sale, I bet, next week. Yeah, everyone's asking. A little different venue there, Chin. What and Brian it? did that. A little different. <laughs> a little different. I like how you're the only one that had a shirt on. In the yeah, <laughs> everyone else doesn't have a shirt on. They're like, how shirt. dare you have a shirt on? I'm like, ah, uh, I only rock shirts. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why uh, everyone else has their shirt off. They those always have their shirt off. Those guys like to do that, so I don't know. Yeah, Bert will just rip his shirt off. Mm-hmm. Let's see the picture. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I mean, Bobby Lee's so serious in that picture. Badass. Someone says, when did Bobby Lee start modeling? He does look like a straight model there. Mm -hmm. mm. Bert's also one of my favorite people on this earth. I love those guys. He's, he seems like such a sweetheart. Mm -hmm. And MJ loves Bobby. Yeah, I love them both. Bobby Lee, Bobby Lee, and was Kalela? Kalela for Tiger up. Belly. Yeah, Tiger have, Belly's they have badass. Tiger Belly. Yeah. Oh, God, I gotta go on there. Ask me to go so on a while, good. and I just forgot. Their videos are good too. Are they? They're probably the most badass couple. Yeah. They I are a them. sweet couple. Mm -hmm. How good. about I hosted a fight campaign with them when uh, it might have been it was uh, Mendez versus Connor because Rogan was gone in Brazil. This oh, is this before is so his familiar. deal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then so Rowan's like, hey, do a companion, do it without me. And then I was like, all right. So it was uh, Bobby Lee, his girl who knows MMA really well. Mm -hmm. She's also a smoke show. So hot. Yeah, <laughs> Bobby Lee's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> killing it. Um, so you have her, dime piece, who knows MMA. And then you have Bobby Lee, who's hilarious. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Brian and myself. And then That Jamie. sounds great. It was yeah. fun. Right. It was cool. fun. It was so much fun. But yeah, their their podcast is great. We got. Mm -hmm. I, I thought we were gonna have Bobby Lee on the Fun Kid tomorrow. I oh. wanted him on, but Brian wants this guy who specialized in Einstein and uh, Picasso. <laughs> so we had an argument about it. And I was like, God, I, I just feel like you should save that for your. He has his own podcast called Mixed, Mixed Mental, Mental Arts. Arts. That's seven hundred listeners, but still. <laughs> I feel like he should have saved that guy for that. That's what I was telling yeah. him. Like, dude, you need to have him on that. Like, that's your cup of tea. Mm -hmm. you come on here and you just drop knowledge about Einstein and Picasso. It might be tough sell, bro. Sounds great, but I, bo I vote Bobby Lee, too. Bobby Lee. Right? <laughs> yeah, we both vote. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. That's what Damn. I'm saying. So we'll see. All right. It'll text Cal when we get out of here. Um, there's some... I mean, there... There's stuff going on in the fight world. There's always stuff going on in the fight world. Today we got on uh, uh, my boy Tony Jeffries and Glenn, who's my trainer, but they also happen to be balls deep in boxing. They, obviously, Tony, uh, if you guys haven't heard him on the show before, I usually go to him for a lot of boxing stuff. But Tony was my boxing coach when I fought in the UFC. He was a bronze medal winner in the Olympics. And he's been boxing all his life. He's on the national team. He's been around the circuit. He knows all the literally all the guys. Um, so he'll have some good insight. Because this weekend's Triple G Canelo. I know. So this this breakdown today will be for Triple G Canelo, which I cannot fucking wait for. Uh, my mom doesn't listen to this show, but <laughs> my mom's coming to town this weekend with all my aunts and my cousins. Oh. And I lied to him and told him I have something to do on Saturday night so I can watch this boxing match in peace. Because they don't like boxing. Oh. But this fight is such a big deal. Yeah. I lied to my mom. <laughs> Poor mom. And if you listen to this now, I'm <laughs> fucked. Yeah. But they don't like fighting, so 
I think I'm good. But she's in town. I don't. Hey, mom. You came on. Hey, mom. Listen, I'm being with her weekend. Friday, all day Saturday, all day Sunday. Saturday night. Right. I'm busy. Saturdays for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but, I mean, when yeah, Canelo Triple G is such a big fight. I'm so well, yeah. I'm surprised UFC's trying to compete with him. It sucks for Rockle because it's kind of his coming out party because he's had a long layoff. You know, he he got knocked out by Bisbing, and then he had negotiation issues with the UFC, and then he thought he was going to be able to do modeling full time. You know, it's a tough gig. Mm-hmm. You ever seen a real model? I talk about this all the time with people. You ever seen? You ever seen like a legit? Male model, pretty skinny, aren't they? They're tiny, and they 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 make me look like Adele next to them. Like I just, <laughs> like I'm in shape, dude. I'm all right looking for an average dude compared to a model, like a professional model. No, what are we talking about? Like it's not, you're not gonna have a career modeling, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I don't it's know. a tough fucking like Luke Rockhold's huge. He's a good looking fucking dude. Yeah, he's a straight dime piece. I think he should be on the next. He should be like the next Bachelor. That would be that's oh. what I. That's what I would pitch him as. I, I would instead of agree. a professional model. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know how much <laughs> stuff he's even done, but you know, I don't look. But I'm guessing I only saw one thing when he came Me out too. as a model. Yeah, Me one too. thing that was it. Yeah, like one picture. And then you know he made some bank off that, so he's like, man, I'll just keep doing this, and then. It's tough because those things go hand in hand. Because the reason why you get the notoriety, obviously you look good, but it's because you're one of the best fighters in the world. Uh-huh. So you stop fighting and you just dive into modeling. Then the pitch is he's a good looking dude. Well, they're in the same pool as professional models who starve themselves and that's what they do. And their face are symmetrical. They don't have broken bones and noses and stuff. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like a lot of fighters, they get into Hollywood, they do acting or whatever. Mm hmm. Well, the reason why you got that role in that movie is because you're a badass fighter. So your acting skills don't have to match because people see you go, oh, we've seen that guy or gal knock bitches out or tap bitches out. That's we, Okay, they're a badass, certified badass. We get that. So then they don't have to have the same credentials as acting as the other professional actors. Then they go, oh, wait, this is the life. I'm going to punch in the face. I'm just going to go acting full time. All right, well, now take away that UFC credit. And now you're in the pool of professional actors mm-hmm. who dedicate their lives to that craft. So now it's a different animal. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I wonder who looks more like a model. Have you seen them? Uh, mm-hmm. So there's Luke Rockhold and then there's Alan Jovan. Have you seen? Jo- jo- seen Jovan like straight Versace He looks like a model, model. right? Yeah. That's crazy. I haven't seen that. You haven't seen Jovan? Mm-hmm. He, 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 was on, uh, he was also on Equ- Equinox campaign. Like, Jovan's a good looking dude. Rockhold's like a. Rockhold looks like a movie star. So, this, yeah, this like, is oh, Jovan. Wow. Go yeah. to the black and white one. For God, look at that. I mean, he, yeah. look at his, his like face, his shoulders. Like, yeah. And look at his body. Oh, yeah. And then let's type in Luke Rockhold for her. Dude, can you do Luke Rockhold modeling? Yeah. Oh, there you go, model. Well, that's probably the closest thing to a modeling picture. Mm, so go back, go to that one where you have the jacket on the far left. He's gonna do like more lifestyle model. Oh, he's trying to do like print. Yeah, like, but does he look like a model to yeah. you compared to the other guy? No, I mean he's too I, rugged. I, oh, it's a little rugged. He's yeah. not pretty enough. Uh. Like, <laughs> like, I, no homo. Like Alan Joban's a pretty ass human being. <laughs> Luke Rockhold looks like he could be the next Clint Eastwood. Like. Luke yeah. Rockhold's more built for Hollywood. Like mm-hmm. I could see Luke Rockhold in that movie, um, uh, Hell or High Water. Like as a badass, you know, like Clint Eastwood type of. I'm not saying he has the acting skills, but yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, there's definitely more ruggedness. Yeah, he's like you know, like almost like a Guy Ritchie type of character. Uh-huh. Model. It's interesting. Professional model. He's too gangster for that. <laughs> Like a Scott Atkins. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's a tough sell. But he got a modeling contract, got paid to model. But I, I could see him doing more stuff in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Indeed. If he learns how to act, I don't know if he can act or not, but. Yeah, diff- again, we're talking about rules. different animal. Good looking dude, though. But say, same with, uh, you know, for female fighters, as far as they're like, oh, you know, she can be a model. I'm like, again, you. 
You ever seen a female? You ever seen Victoria's Secret angels? For God's sake. (laughs) You ever seen them? They're delicate flowers. What the fuck? That's a model. model. Models, man. Supermodel, yeah. Yeah, this supermodel. I mean, fuck. Different field. It's it's just different animal. Different build, skinny. Who knows? And then there's, you know, there's also a, uh, there's even campaign for plus size models. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, like I I saw a bus in New York City. It was like, um, I'm still gorgeous just because whatever. I'm not stick thin, you know, like. Why do they have to even say that? Just put it out there and Mm -hmm. be a model. When they when they focus on that, it seems like they're trying too hard to be like, that okay, is. you're beautiful. We think you're beautiful. Uh, my problem with that is like that's <laughs> not healthy. Oh, yeah. uh, but have you seen some of them where they just look like they're just they're big overweight boned? for sure, but they're also really big boned. Yeah. Can you bring up an example? Is Ashley Graham big boned? She's fine, but she is a she's plus size, thing. right? She's she's uh-huh. like the face of plus size, and she had a book. She had a. a she came out with a book about it too. Okay, never mind. She's there's some overweight stuff. See, but there. there's some where she's thicker as a Snickers, <laughs> like not fun thick, yeah. like where you like goddamn. And then I've seen some. Yeah, like here it doesn't look promote, promote healthy. Don't promote being like, like that's not size. Mm, <laughs> yeah, it's a fine line. Yeah, isn't it's it? very very tricky to talk about this stuff. It, it is. It's, yeah, it's a thin line. All right, never mind. I don't know if they're a uh, big bone or not. <laughs> no, like hold, put, go to uh, – uh, they're, they're saying Maggie Brown's too thick. Go to Maggie Brown for me. Hmm. Let's look at that first picture. She's thick. She's thick. And you could tell that that is – She's super thick. Over- but what's, what's right, thick well. and what's overweight? Because I know thick's like a good thing nowadays. You know? uh, oh. There's a big so – There's a huge so difference, There's a right? big well, – there is a but, world of difference between being thick and being overweight. Like, yeah. show her thick. These photos she, like, vary. She's, some are like, oh. Some she's overweight. Yeah. yeah. Like, if, like that gut – She's beautiful, but <laughs> – Like that gut is not healthy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot to carry. It's not healthy for women to carry alone around the belly. So Demi Lovato, would you say she's thick? She's I'd had anorexia. She's gorgeous. She she has she used to, right? She used to yeah, she had crazy body dysmorphia. But now she seems healthier and, and thick. Like healthy. She's thick. healthy though. See, she's yeah. thick as Amber easy. Rose to me. She's a, she's pretty hmm. thick. Like she's like I feel like the cut. Like my like my girl's thick. But she's okay. like she's fit though. She's like she, my girl's stomach is flat as fuck. Yeah. She's like Demi Lovato, I wouldn't say it's thick. No. Amber Rose is thick. Okay, that, yeah. I would definitely say that's thick. See, that's, yeah, that's thick. That's thick. Yeah. Nicki Minaj is thick. Yes, Nicki Minaj. There you go. That's a great one. But mm-hmm. but see, again, Nicki Minaj is fake. Yeah, it's just thick. See, to me, that's thick. That's thick. And then those supermodels we're looking at are f- out of shape. Yeah. Like Amber Rose isn't out of shape. Uh-uh. No. Like She's just, strong. Yes. Like there's some girls you see where – like that's super attractive to me. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's too much for HN. It is too much for me. This, if she was around like this, that's like. See, she doesn't. She don't get me wrong. She's beautiful there. Well, way too much. Uh, but she's beautiful there. But that doesn't look natural on her when she's that skinny. Like mm-hmm. she's not. She wasn't born to be Suffering. that skinny. Interesting, you brought up Demi Lovato for thickness. Because she's, I went to find her she's, as thickness. She's Shorter. battled though. She's gone up and down, and now she's healthy though. She promotes like working out because she's an idol for a lot of young girls. She's, she's yeah, she's, she's that role model. She just got now. her blue belt in jiu jitsu too. Badass girl, I will show you a dark oh, joke you won't okay. believe. To me, that's thick. But this mm. is a certain time in her life, I'm sure. Yeah, but she's hot she, as hell too. She's oh, very gorgeous. gorgeous. Yeah, straight dime piece. Um, thick. I can see what you're saying, <laughs> but it's also because she's short. She's Super like really hot. short. I don't like I don't like super skinny. No, I feel like you need a basic white girl chin skinny. No, I don't like the super skinny. <laughs> I like you don't f- like thick. I don't like thick, but you like healthy. Thick. <laughs> you like in shape. No, not even that. I don't. I don't care about muscles. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. I'm not saying so muscles. Freaky. Um, <laughs> you don't know what you want. I don't know. Yeah, we've been over this. <laughs> um, I don't know. How, oh, yes, sorry, I'm with Luke Rockhold. <laughs> So it's difficult because Luke Rockhold is coming out party. He's fighting David Branch. Branch is a tough customer, not on the same level as Luke Rockhold. Like Luke Rockhold 
should do work, especially if you go based off Branch's last fight, his first fight in the in the in the UFC since his long kind of uh, I guess say you know because he was in World Series of Fighting where he became like heavyweight champion of the world, middleweight champion of the world, and he was in the UFC before that had an awful run in the UFC, but then went to World Series of Fighting. But World Series of Fighting, it's just and you say, well, look how well Gaethje's doing. I get that, but. David Branch isn't fighting even this in the same realm as the guys Luke Rockhold was fighting. Yeah. Not even close. Luke Rockhold would murk everyone that's ever fought in the World Series of Fighting in the first round under three minutes. Literally would murk every single person, not even close. So I don't care too much about what David Branch did outside the UFC. It just it's not the same. Gaethje was not fighting the same guys. Gaethje came to the, U- to the UFC and he did well against Michael Johnson. But Ge- if Gaethje messed with guys like Tony Ferguson... Um, you know, Kevin Lee, Khabib, I, I don't know how much that Bronx style is going to pay off. He's fun to watch, but that's... Yeah, I worry about him. Not worry about him, but I worry about his... It's... The upper echelon guys aren't going to fight. They're not going to sit there and pocket and play that game with you. Yeah, they're, they're feels gonna, uncomfortable. They're going to outclass you. I agree. But I, that's fun. fair. Uncomfortable it's uncomfortable, but, but it's fun to yeah. watch, but I don't think his story ends well. Yeah. I, I think uh, Eddie Alvarez... Eddie Alvarez looked a little rough in his last fight, but I think Eddie Alvarez... If he fights smart, has more tools to beat Justin Gaethje. Yeah. Uh, the the you know the fight cards not, there. There's a lot of fun fights. I'm definitely gonna watch it. It's on FS1. I'll record it and watch it. Um, there's a lot of good matchups on there where it's gonna be. People are gonna be talking about the card like, man, you should have watched it. There's a lot of good fights. I get that. It's just not to compete with Triple G Canelo. It doesn't make sense why you even have this card. Yeah. Why not do it on Sunday or Friday? Sunday would be perfect. Right? Is there anything going on on Sunday? Football. Football. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to do it on Sunday. No one's going to pay attention. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Do it on Friday. Yeah. Friday's a good night. Yeah. Friday night fights. UFC Friday night fights. I don't get why you wouldn't do it. Obviously, there's you know stipulations and contract issues with Fox, but I don't get why you wouldn't do it. Why compete on Saturday night with college football and Triple G Canelo? And you don't have any bangers on the card. When I say bangers, I mean big, big, uh, huge draws. draws. You have good fights, a lot of fun fights on there. But let's do some current events, Jen. Sounds good. Let's move over from Demi <laughs> and talk about Demetrius. Uh, so Demetrius Johnson, DJ Mighty Mouse. He's he's worried he won't be paid for the last fight where Ray Borg pulled out last minute, and the reason is because I guess there's supposed to be a real quick turnaround. So his fight was supposed to be last weekend, and if they book him on October 7th is what they're looking like, he feels like when it's that quick of a turnaround, they sometimes won't pay. True. That sucks, dude. It does suck because he went through the whole camp. It wasn't his yeah. fault. The guy pulled out. It's, it's obviously on Borg. But um, so he put, usually if it's a quick turnaround, then typically they do not pay the athletes. That's true. Hopefully they do make things happen on October 7th. If it is possible, then I can get a paycheck. As far as I'm concerned, my back, my black ass should be going to the bank, depositing a check right now, and taking my kids to school. But that's not the case right now. Um, yeah, he said one of the things he was worried about when he got that call that Ray Borg wasn't going to make it. He says, "Should I still make weight because he wants to get that paycheck?" Yeah. See, the, and this is where the, and it's a whole another can of worms. But if there's a fighters' union, you can make sure. No matter what happens the week of the fight, if your opponent pulls out, if they change opponents, whatever, you still get paid regardless because you went through, you dedicated eight weeks of your life to yeah. making the fight. And if you still make weight, so it sucks that he goes, I don't, because it's up to them. Ah, let's give him a little something to pipe him down. He is one of the best champions of all time. Let's give him something it, where it shouldn't be up in the air. Like it sucks when you're hoping you get a bonus, you're hoping you get a discretionary bonus in the mail, but you have no idea. It's it's the good old boys club where they sometimes they do it sometimes they don't mm-hmm. you can't run a business like that you just can't can you imagine if in the NFL if Tom Brady uh, won a Super Bowl if he's wondering if he's going to get the bonus no it's before they even start the season there's stipulations there's there's goals if you hit them no matter what you're going to get it no matter what doesn't matter what's going on in the world doesn't matter what happens with the other team injuries no matter what if you make that you get this money period. Yeah, they should have a ways to go as far as getting more professional and uh, as run it as a straight sports business. It sucks, but he should get paid. I hope he does. I doubt he does. 
I bet they give them a little something, maybe like, oh, here's ten or fifteen grand for the problem, but yeah. you'll fight in October, which sucks. That does suck. I can't imagine putting in that much work. Um, have you ever had a a big fight pull out? Uh, I had LeVar Johnson pull out when I was supposed to fight him in Vancouver, but and that was like two weeks before. Um, obviously, didn't get paid. So you didn't get I paid. I wasn't Demetrius Johnson, no. Didn't get paid. Um, that's hmm. about it. Would, do you think they would have paid you if it was closer to the actual fight day? Doubt it. Doubt it. Well, that sucks. What else you got? All right, Francis Ngannou doesn't know for sure. If Junior Dos Santos is in, guilty or innocent, but he himself will avoid all supplements, so this doesn't happen to him. You know, it's a shame guys have to avoid all supplements just because you know the the testing so strict. Uh, I give JDS the benefit of the doubt. Um, so he says. So the Frenchman says that's why sometimes I think about how to take supplements, but I don't do it. I never took supplements because maybe something's wrong. They just say yes. Yeah, and for a guy like Ngannou, you know, obviously you look at his body structure and you're like, oh, he's taking something. He looks really, really buff. He, I know he does, right? He looks but like it. I know. I, I'm telling you, the biggest freaks I know. People want to assume they're on supplements because it makes them feel better about themselves and their performances. But the biggest freaks I know: Tim Tebow, mm. Joe Klaffenstein, um, You know, all, a lot of these guys in Ganu, they're they're not. They're just they're built different than the rest of the world. Yeah, that's why they're at where they're at. They're just complete freaks. The, you know, you you look at these guys and you look at their body and you're like, what the fuck? It's like, oh, that's that's why they're some of the best athletes in the world. It's not because, and it's it's so easy to go, oh, he's on steroids. It's it, you just discredit them. It's just not fair. They're just genetically different than us. For Francis, it, it's a good thing he's like this too. Yeah, seems like a good dude too. Yeah, he's I great. wonder. Yeah, I wonder how strong he is. Yeah, I don't know. There's a difference between, you know, f- fighting strong, football strong, and then weight room strong. There's just a difference. Have you wrestled with Tebow? Yes. So how, how's that strength compared to, like... He's strong as fuck because his, his his lower body is insanely strong. He's so strong, but he doesn't know the technique. Uh-huh. So I can, you know, you, you can do stuff. Yeah. But his base, he's so, he's so strong. Uh, his legs and haunches and ass, like, he's incredibly strong. Very interesting. What else you got? Uh, what do you think of this? Donald Cerrone versus Darren Till. This came out of nowhere. I, I had, when, when Donald's sitting in that chair right there as my guest host on Fire <laughs> Kid, I told him, quit taking whatever fucking fight they offer you. Yeah. Only fight to get the next title shot if you need a belt. And then when I I don't know who Darren Till is. Yeah. I'm balls. D- I have a show dedicated to mixed martial arts. I don't know who Darren Till is. It's really interesting. All I know is he speaks Portuguese. I know who he is now. He, yeah. he's, he's a UK fighter, correct? Mm-hmm. No, well, Polish? Pretty sure he's UK. UK, no, okay. Yeah, never mind, UK. I've never heard of him. Yeah. So he put, send me it, and I'll sign it. I'll fight any cunt. It's so intense. He's an upcoming guy for Cowboy. I, I never, and I get it, the whole, I'll fight anyone anywhere. I'm a Cowboy. I don't care who I fight. I get it. It's what made him who he is. Um, I just I don't get the point of this, and it's I'm assuming it's on a fight pass. It's on a Polish card, UFC, Daznik. I don't know how to pronounce that. Gdansk. And look at the rest of the card. It's awful. I kind of like the Feely Lobov one. Fe- yeah, Feely Lobov's fun fight. Yeah. But I'm just yeah. how many how many people are going to see this? What time of day, what time of a day is it? Uh, is it is it just on Fight Pass? Is it on FS1? How many people are gonna see Cowboy? You know, if if Cowboy gets beat, what, what do we do with Cowboy? So it's in Poland. So let's say Cowboy were to lose this up and coming guy, not a lot of people know a lot about. Mm-hmm. Then what do you do with Cowboy? Then you still take any fight any time? Are you out of the top ten? What do we do? Knowing him, do you think they paid him a? Like a lot of money to headline this polling card? No, they're going to pay him whatever the, he gets. It doesn't work like that. Dang. He probably just wanted to fight. And they're like, all right, the only fight we got for you is this. Cool. The cow- known cowboy. I'll, I'll take it. I don't care. All right, it's so Darren Till. Never heard of him. Bring it on. Main event. Obviously, Cowboy should win the fight. I just, the, the risk doesn't, 
pay juice off. Juice not worth the squeeze. No, it just it, it it doesn't make sense to me. But that's Cowboy. Yeah. Completely different animals. Cowboy's one of the best fighters of all time to fight in the UFC. So the Cowboy's going to do what Cowboy... Cowboy's been a Cowboy, which I think business-wise doesn't make a lot of sense. But his management, whoever, I think they're doing him a disservice. I think after that fight with Robbie Lawler, which is such a close fight, I yeah. think he did lose, but it was such a close fight. Now you're headlining a fight pass card against Darren Till? You have be Robbie Lawler, man. What happens if you... That was Robbie fucking Lawler, one of the biggest names in the world, one of the greatest fighters we've ever seen. You went the by decision. Some people thought you won. I personally didn't, but some people thought you did. You should be fighting a big name guy now. Are you upset with him right now? Nope. I, I, I get frustrated. But I shouldn't because what you want for some people, they don't want. Yeah. That's cowboy. That's why Cowboys are one of the greatest fighters in the world, and I sit talk about better fighters. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I look at it from a business perspective. Cowboy looks at it from a fighter's perspective, which he should. I'm not frustrated with Cowboy. I'm frustrated with his management. That's fair. But also with the UFC, whoever made this fight, what are you doing? You need stars. Cowboy's one of your biggest stars. You haven't fighting Darren Till in Poland on a fight pass. Yeah. It's just it's it's mismanagement all the way around. I just I don't get it. I just want to see what Darren's been doing. He's undefeated. He's doing something right. Yeah, I just don't know the names. But so, um, so he has one KO due to elbows. Other than that, he's had he's had all draws. I mean, he's had all decisions, unanimous decisions, unanimous. A draw, a majority draw. Well, he retired too. It looks like he retired. Uh, he probably retired that guy. Oh, okay, okay. He had a fight of the night, but it was a draw in Dublin. And then till miss weight, it just. All right. Well, we'll see what happens. It's, just, it's a head scratcher, man. All right. How about this matchup? Yoani and Jacek yes. versus Rose Namajunas. I love that fight. Love that fight. It's going to be interesting how Rose is going to answer Yoana's striking on the feet. I'll see on the ground, I think Rose has a, a big advantage. She's a monster on the ground. Mm-hmm. Getting Yoana down is a different animal. However, Rose, she she's so dynamic, and it's hard to calculate exactly how she's going to fight Yoana, which is a huge X factor for Rose. I think Rose can do better than a lot of people think. I don't know what the odds are, uh, but that to the to the uh, two seventeen is a stack card. Yeah, I love it. I love that card. You look at the card so far. We on what Wikipedia there? This always happens, dude. If you go to Wikipedia though, yeah. So watch UFC two seventeen. Uh huh. Wiki. Uh huh. And then we'll get two sixteen wiki. There it is. This one. Yeah. So we'll click on. That. Oh, this is two hundred seven. But we can fight it in here. This is what we did last time. Oh, word. Boom. Got it. Um, so, so, so far, far you have Bisping GSP headline the card. You got Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw. Love that fight. You want yeah. Jen check versus Rose Namanunez. You have my boy Pat Cummins fighting Corey Anderson. And then, but it says Wonder Boy versus Jorge. That's not announced. That's not official, right? I don't I don't think I heard anything that. official. If it is that on, that's the best one of yeah, the best cards awesome of the fight. year by far. Uh Wonder Boy Jorge would make me so much more excited for this card. Cody T see, I feel like Cody TJ should headline this card. Bisping GSP, I yeah. love both guys. I'm down with that. Bisping too. GSP does nothing for me. Like as far as like on the you know, the applause meter, whoa. <laughs> Bisbing GSP and I, I love both fighters. If they're fighting, I wish they were on the card, but fighting two different people, and I'd be more excited. Them fighting each other. If this is a scale one to ten here, I'm, I'm too stiff to go all the way. I give it a three on a scale one to ten. <laughs> I give Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillshaw, yeah, a nine point nine. Yes, I. I love Joanna it. Rose, I give a fucking nine. No, yeah. than that. I mean, Wonder Boy, Masvidal. I give a nine. So you have nine, nine, nine. Bisbee and GSP, 
three, four. <laughs> All right, I think this we isn't some... a big, and this doesn't kill pay per view numbers either. Unfortunately, you don't think it's gonna do that well. I don't think it breaks a million. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that UFC uh, two seventeen is gonna be like some crazy barn burner. You don't do huge pay per view buy. No, I think it does well. It's a great stack card, but as far as like huge, huge, you know, draws. I just don't see it. I, I bet it does like 1.2 to 1.3. Yeah. I think if they move that, like you said, that makes the card look so much better. If Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw was the actual main event. I know, because that's the most interesting fight on the card. It just makes it look better. But also, you want Cody Garbrandt to be your next superstar. So why wouldn't you have him main event True. Mass Square Garden? Like Bisbee and George, how many, how many fights does either one of those guys have left? So you got to invest in the future, but yeah. who knows? All right, what else you got? All right. Um, I thought I saw this, but I didn't. So John Jones tweeted, and let's see right here. It says post, uh, posted cryptic tweet? Yeah, cryptic tweet. This is on September 10th, so two days ago. And he writes, you got to live with tomorrow despite how you're feeling today. Does that show guilt? <laughs> you got to live with tomorrow despite how you're feeling today. Yikes. Um... Uh... I mean, he, I don't know. We're still waiting for that sample B to come back, right? Yeah. If I was a betting man, I would say it doesn't come back good. Let me ask you this. So if this, let's just say he really does fail and there's no appeal or anything, he does fail, and then he has like a three-year suspension, do you think he just retires altogether? Yeah, that ship has kind of sailed. I mean... Out of sight, out of mind, especially with the current state the UFC's in. So, I mean, if he really wanted to, he'd never come back to the UFC. Maybe I shouldn't say never, but if he really wanted to, he'd just say, "All right, cool, you caught me," and then go do his thing in Japan, uh, sign with Ryzen, and, and fight all over internationally. Because mm. how's he going to make money? Yeah, no, your sponsors are gone, gone. They left a long time ago after you hit that pregnant lady. Um, so. You know, I, I don't know what his monthly bills look like. I don't know what his nut is every month, but you know, it, it, he's made a lot of money. So I, who knows how smart he was with it? So ho- hopefully he doesn't have to do something like that. But also, if you want to compete, the competitor in you, and oh, also in rising, and still do the uh, Mexican supplements and be fine. That's that's probably how this movie ends for him. It's I would bet my bottom dollar that that uh, B sample comes back hot. And it doesn't look good. Yeah. And he gets, at, at the very least, three years. I would say he's probably looking at four-year suspension. What else you got? Uh, did I show you this yet? I don't know how excited you are about this, but Paige Van Zant versus Jessica I is official for UFC 216. I like it. I mean, uh, I always like watching Paige Van Zant fight. She's a little beast and obviously very easy on the eyes. Um you know, it's 216. Tony first and Kevin Lee, love it. Yes. Fabrice Verdum, Derek Lewis, love it. And I think Derek, Derek Lewis, especially after his efforts in Houston, his star has uh, only rose. Yeah. And then Paige Van Zandt, just guy, fun fight. Walt Harris, Mark Godbear, whatever. Darius, Evan Dunham, uh, that's a fun fight. Will Brooks, Nick Lentz, fun mm. fight. Dude, Bobby Green, Lando Venata. Ladies, Taveras, good yeah. one. It's a it's a it's great card. Yeah. That cool. Tony, I wish Tony First and Kevin Lee was uh, in New York for two seventeen. Yeah, yeah, but that's a great card. Cool. What all else right, you let's got? check out. All right, this is the old news, but I thought it was pretty cool. The Mayweather-McGregor fight, you know they played it in movie theaters mm-hmm. for people that couldn't go to the show or didn't want to watch it on pay-per-view? I guess it broke records there, too. So it it broke the top 10 in 534 theaters. Shit. So, do, and million. we still don't know the exact numbers of the pay-per-view. We know it broke the record, but we don't know exactly how close or what exactly it did, huh? Mm-hmm. I wonder when those numbers will come out. So didn't I know? I think uh, Chael mentioned this that you know how Dana White said it was six point five million, and then I think Steven Espinosa said it was closer to four point something. And he said it's trending to break the record, but not six point five. Yeah, 
What do you think of that? Those two people going. Uh, I would side with probably Espinosa on that. He's more. Uh, he's not as emotional guy. He's more calculated mm-hmm. as far as he's not going to say something unless he's absolutely sure. Where also remember when Dan said six point five, he didn't think that was going to get out. Yeah, that was a little weird. Yeah, so, I, but I I don't think Dan would make up six point five, especially in that situation. He has no reason to make it up. So I I think it's somewhere in the middle there. I think Dana's right, and I think Espinoza being the guy who he is, he's very calculated. And he's, he's he only says stuff that you know he's thought about. So. I think it's somewhere in the middle. I like, you know, I, I believe both guys. I just think Dana heard this number from someone on his end. Espinosa heard this number from someone on his end. It's probably somewhere in the middle, but still the biggest of all time. Gotcha. What else you got? Alyssa Overeem called out Francis Ngannou. Yeah, I retweeted that shit. Oh, you did? So you saw that? A weird so he put, picture. we all want to skip the line. And he said, I heard someone is trying to skip the line. I can't allow such a thing to happen. So Francis Ngannou, let's go. At UFC. Boom. Boom. What the Predators say? Keep talking. Oh, shit. Yeah, keep talking shit, and I will snap your with my punch. Keep talking shit, and I will snap your with my punch. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best uh, shit talk, but whatever. I'll take it. <laughs> Just get the fight done. I'm not... Listen, I'm not watching that fight because both these guys are cerebral geniuses when it comes to war of words. Um, but... As far as the Twitter war, I'd say uh, Overeem won that one. It's a pretty cool picture there. Yeah, a little Yeah, a little picture, and, you know. That's <laughs> a great fucking fight. And that's the exact fight Francis needs if he wants to get a title shot. I do like that fight a lot, yeah, too. Yeah, it's a great fight. I, oof, you know, Overeem, probably the most decorated heavyweight striker of all time. And Francis Gano fancies himself a knockout artist. Say what? And Alistair chose a picture of his... Overeem days. Uberim oh, Uberim, days. Uberim, sorry. Well, next to Francis, you're fucking right he did. Yeah. He ain't posting a current picture with Usada in this bitch. <laughs> what else you got? All right. Nick Newell, the one-handed fighter. Well, he has like a forearm, a little bit of a forearm after the elbow, right? Something yeah. like that. Yeah, like a little nub after the, the, the elbow. Yeah. That guy. He's coming back. He's coming out of retirement to fight for LFA. For LFA? Yeah. Why? I think that's where he that's where he was like he uh, retired for sh- two years, um, so he racked up thirteen one record. He was amazing to watch fight just because it was so nuts. And I'm not sure the other promotions wanted to take him in, at least not back then. Uh, yeah, you know the, you know so he retired two years ago. I retired longer than that. Um, if you come back now, that it's a different game, especially the weight class he's in. I don't know. Um, that's yeah, gonna be a tough go for him. Let me ask you this: He's so, inspiring to watch, though. It's cool, man. Yeah, he is inspiring. But do you think? I know ev- everyone says it's like it's a disadvantage that he has that arm gone. Yeah, huge disadvantage. But did you see him when he when he puts people in rear naked chokes? He he wraps them with his uh. How do I do this? With so his good arm. He'll do. He'll wrap with the good arm, right? Let me and get then my he'll good hold arm, it. Right? Uh, the the one that has a full hand on it. Yeah, he'll wrap around the neck with the arm, and yeah. then he'll have that little thing. Here, yeah. so people can't take the you know, yeah, to like pull the arm off. Yeah, I've seen it happen a lot. With no, him. for sure. So that's an advantage, right? For sure. Uh I don't know. Like, you'd have to look at the level of guys he's fighting. Um, I mean, I wish him the best, man. It's inspiring what he's doing. Yes, it is inspiring. It's gonna be so tough, though. Yeah. Good luck on the return trip. Very tough. What else you got? All right. Oh, Conor McGregor. He. The like a security guard during the time when he was throwing hurling cans at Nate Diaz, one of the security guards sued him because he got hit by one of the cans, and he sued him for ninety five thousand dollars. Jesus Christ! Pick claims the lawsuit that Conor made fifteen million from that fight with Diaz during which he was seemingly struck by Diaz one hundred sixty times. So, this is a weird way he came up with it. So, hold up, listen to this morons <laughs> math here. Peg claims in a lawsuit that Conor McGregor made $15 million from his fight with Diaz. That's not confirmed, so. Um, during which he was significantly struck by Diaz 166 times. So, $15 million divided by 166 is about $90,000. The extra 5K comes from the medical expenses. This guy's a moron. Interesting, right? Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> his name is William Peg. Please figure out a better way to get money. What else you got? Um, okay. Justin Gaethje says that the reason why Connor gasses out 
at least the reason why he gassed out at the Floyd Mayweather fight is because he doesn't do grappling or wrestling. So he hasn't gone to, he hasn't taken his body to that edge where you start developing your cardiovascular. Um, God, that's a tough sell on Gaethje's part. And I love Gaethje, but, um, yeah, says so you have to learn how to fight through it when it sucks and when it's really hard. But boxing is a different cardiovascular system than grappling. Yeah. And so I, I, I would imagine he should have done more road work and not on a bike, more running. Um, and also, it's just a, a different animal. It's just different. Animal. I don't think if he wrestled more, his cardio would have been better against Floyd Mayweather. That, that doesn't make sense uh, at all. <laughs> what else you got? All right, there's a great story about Amanda Nunes or Nunez. After her 215 fight, she gave her belt to a cancer survivor. The girl can do no wrong. Was she the biggest? That, she made up for a lot. Women's after star this, yeah. of all time. I, think about it. To, to me, you know, she's she's on pace to break Ronda Rousey's record for most title defenses. Look at her resume. She beat Geronimo. She beat Shevchenko twice. She beat Misha Tate. You, you look at the girl she's beat, man. It's nuts. She has such a great story with her and her girl and their lovers and training partners. And I just don't get how she's not on billboards around West Hollywood and other stuff. Jesus Christ. She put the belt on me. She told me I was the real champion. Champion. Hearing those words means so much to me after nine years of sickness and sadness, pain, suffering on and off gun with cancer. What a beast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a Amanda Nunes fan, man. I don't get how she doesn't get more love. I just don't get it. What else you got? Let's go to this. Chris Cyborg got her boxing license, was granted her boxing license, and she t- intends to pursue a career in the boxing ring. Against who, though? I guess anyone, right? But also, like, she needs to focus on Holly Holm. And in women's boxing, there's nothing that would really make waves who she could fight, you know, in order to get her boxing license. You know, she started fighting with that Clarissa Shields, and Shields is, you know, probably the the most famous woman right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Other than that, what are you going to do? So are you going to fight your training partner, Clarissa Shields? I would watch that for sure, but that's not like a pay-per-view barn burner. I keep using barn burner this episode for whatever reason, but (laughs) that's not like a crazy hit in women's boxing. Mm -hmm. Maybe she just wants to compete more. I don't know. Here, This is interesting. So it says Cyborg said her UFC contract expires in October. And she has no deal right now in place beyond that. So do you think this is a move to intimidate the UFC like I'm going to leave? The UFC is going to say, who are you going to fight? What are you going to do over there? What girl are you going to fight that's going to be a threat to us? It's not like she's Conor McGregor threatening to f- fight Floyd Mayweather. Mm-hmm. You know, there's just no – the UFC is going to say, all right, good luck. You know, I don't, I don't know how this ends for Cyborg. We're going to have her back on the show soon. You know, I, I just – she's – and I, I want to have her on. I want to have this honest discussion with her. I, her social media is hurting her a little bit. Why? If you look at her social media, it's, she's complaining every, every day when I go on there. Mm-hmm. She's complaining about UFC should have done this. Why am I not in this? Why am I doing this? I don't know if it's her, if it's her man, what are they doing? But it's so negative. You just got the belt, you know, and hopefully now they're in negotiations for contract. But it's just every little nitpick thing is complaining, taking shots at the UFC. That doesn't. That's not smart. Yeah. You got the belt, man. You got what you want. Let's get this Holly Holm fight. But obviously now if your contract's in October and you guys haven't come to terms, you know, the Holly Holm fight's going to sail away, which is bigger than anything you can do outside the UFC. If you, lo- if you leave the UFC, what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. So hopefully they can come to terms there. Yeah, it's definitely been, like, emotional with her. She's been, like, with her social media – and has it been all since like the birth control stuff? Like maybe is that what? I feel like that I don't think it's her. Everything. I don't like, think it's her. I think she's not. In the, you don't think it is? I think it's her boyfriend. Oh, I, don't know. I think it's how her man. The, how was the English on the hosts? Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> and maybe like a word changed here and there. I, I, don't, I don't think it's her. And I, I think he's you know helped her career, but you just can't. It can't be a, a poor me thing every single day. Her image is just getting ruined right now. It's kind of sad to see. Because she is a great fighter. She's Her training, she's a beast. Like, I always respect Best her. Best of all time. Yeah. But social media is all we see now with yeah. everything. Social media is your publicist. Yeah. So let, just think about this. And if you run your own Twitter or whatever, and you have somewhat of a following, 
if a publisher came up to you and went, hey, we're going to do something negative every single day, you went, whoa, I'm not paying for that. Mm-hmm. People would hate that. Mm-hmm. I know, but we're going to we're gonna focus on what they're not doing for us every single day. Uh, do you think that's going to get them to change anything? No, but we want people to be aware of it. Yeah, people get it, man. Maybe they should all get it. Do by what now. you control, which is beating up Holly Holmes and make you become undeniable. Not complain every single day. Mm-hmm. That's what sets like Nunez and her apart. Because Nunez is a role model. I think it's cool to see. Like you don't see a lot of people like with role models now. Because now everyone, in, like the younger teens, is getting into UFC. They're getting into boxing. Trying they want, to. They need. You know, they want to look up to someone. Yep. Yeah. And Nunez is setting that. She's. And I don't get why Cyborg is getting so much attention for her negativity. And on your nose. Yeah. You said it. You said it clearly. Yeah. Even even I don't like. I, I think we talked about this on Fire and the Kid too, where we're talking about how people, like in a Facebook, you'll see the ser- same person complaining about this and this and this. Mm-hmm. I end up like blocking their their updates because mm-hmm. I get, sure. it messes with me. It makes me feel down. Yeah. You, I, you don't want that. You don't want that. No. Don't use your platform for that. You need to be dealing with that behind the scenes. Sponsors. People too. aren't trying to hear that. Yeah. You just won the belt. You finally have the belt you've always wanted. Let's yeah. focus on the next climbing the next mountain, which is Holly Holm. Because no, you know, no one's going to Sizzler over you beating Tanya Evinger. She's a tough girl, but she's not exactly Holly Holm or Ronda Rousey yeah. or Misha Tate. These huge names that we want to see you fight. I agree. I hope she figures it out what else she got. Um, how do you feel about this? Mickey Gall's returning, and his next fight is against Randy Brown. Randy Brown's the dude from. Uh, Dana White looking for a fight. He was like another up and comer that well, cool. had a, like really good image. I think it's smart because Minky Gall has a lot of skills, and let's not throw him right to the fucking walls right mm-hmm. away. Like I like this, and that's why I actually really support the Contender Series because you're giving guys the advantage of competing against other guys not in the UFC, get to the UFC, and can build kind of that foundation before you start throwing these top fifteen guys. I like it, man. Cool. Oh, it's going to be on two seventeen. So that's oh be nice. Good. What else you got, brother? How about this? Ozdemir is calling out Gustafson, and he promises a first-round knockout. I mean, you imagine if he knocks him out and he's fighting DC. I believe he's po- anything's possible with him. Me too. Uh, <laughs> however, it has to come to a stop at some point, right? Yeah. Um, he doesn't. put. I think it's a smart choice for him not to fight me. I just think Ozdemir versus Gustafson. You know, Gustafson's just a. You get to a certain level. You know, again, there's levels to this game, and I think. Uh, you know, it's gonna be tough for him to just come in with that frantic style and knock out a guy like Gusvin or DC. I'd rather see uh, DC versus Gusvin too. Yeah, especially now. But I, I don't know what's going on with that. I think they're waiting to figure out what happens with John. That sample B come back, and then you're gonna see him make an announcement for DC or Alexander. I would kind of honestly would rather see this. That's fair. First, some some new blood. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I wouldn't mind Gusvin versus uh, Ozdemir. And then have DC fight yeah. the winner. Give DC a little that. bit of a rest mm-hmm. after this roller coaster he's going through. It'd just be fun to see if Volcan could do it. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. I agree. He put he will lose this spot if he fights me. He will go down and lose one year of his life. I understand what's too smart. He's coming back from injury. And he knows he thinks it's time to fight for the belt. He doesn't want to lose. I'm also here. I want to fight. I need to fight. There's not a lot going on in that light heavyweight division, especially not John's out. Yeah. What else you got, brother? Let me, uh, one more I want to ask you about this. because right. What does this mean? So for Tito Brothers, sell the remaining UFC stake in WMEING. I didn't know they actually owned like a, a little portion of it. Yeah, stuff. I thought they completely sold. Um, I mean, it's not a great sign. You know, when the, you're, you know, I don't know how much shares they had left, but it shows you that it's not trending in a positive way. Hmm. Um. So for 16 years, Lorenzo and Frank served as co of the UFC, gradually building the promotion to the global giant is today. Now the brothers who distant cousin Tillman Fertitta recently purchased the – the Fertittas are ball yeah, in. They are. God damn, their cousins, the one who bought the Rockets for $2.2 billion, are expect So the Fertitta brothers are focused – Principally on their publicly traded gaming business, station casinos, and their fledging investment firm, Fertitta Capital. Um, I just think it's a good time to get out. They see where the ship is headed, and they they probably just want to get out while they can. Right, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, I mean, it, listen, if you have stake, it's probably now is the time to get out. It just is what it is. They're going through some growing pains, and not that they're going to fail or anything like that, but you know, everything has its ebb and flow, and they need to 
up and down, and they're getting out before it gets any lower, I assume. Jesus Christ. Cool. Did you want to cover this at all? Uh, the fight night. Uh, man, I'm so focused on Triple G and uh, Canelo, who I have Tony Jeffries and my boy Glenn Holmes on today, my two boxing extraordinaires. Um, so that will be the breakdown today. The only, the only fight to talk about, I covered a little bit, is really the main event with Luke Rockhold, David Branch. It's only really the fight of note here that um, is super significant. Uh, obviously, Perry versus Thiago Alves and Lombard Smith. Those are all fun fights, great fights. They're going to be fun to watch. Definitely watch the card. Tape the card if you can. It's on FS1, fight night. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, so there's going to be a lot of finish, a lot of knockouts. Uh, it's going to be tough to pick fight of the night, but... Rockhold versus Branch, to me, this is an easy one. I, I think Luke Rockhold just has too many tools. I question a little bit how bad Luke Rockhold wants it because he's been out so long after a knockout. That always worries me a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so as far as being hungry, if Luke Rockhold comes in, wants to really make a run at the belt, he's ranked number three in the world, so one win, he's right there, for God's sakes. So if Luke Rockhold still wants it, Luke Rockhold should dismantle David Branch. I, th- I think he TKOs him, I'll say, by the second round. Um, you know, Branch, what Branch does well, I, I feel like Luke Rockhold has an advantage in everything, including this might surprise some, uh, you know, because David Branch is a Henzo Gracie black belt. I think Rockhold has better MMA jiu-jitsu. He's mm-hmm. better submissions. He's longer. He's the bigger fighter. Um, I think Rockhold gets it done. Uh, head kick, I'd say a head kick TKO second round. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Sweet. Boom. Boom. Bring in Tony and Glenn. Let's do it. Let's break down this mega event in the boxing world, Triple G Canelo, ladies and gentlemen, Tony Jeffries and Glenn Holmes. We're back, and I'm joined with special guests Glenn and Tony. <laughs> How's it going, mate? It's good. You're looking skinny, man. Yeah, I am. I mean, I've got a question for you. Eight inches. Another question. <laughs> Four inches wide. Where the fuck is my money? Which money? You was two grand. Why? Off the last time I was on this podcast. <laughs> what was the bet? That Floyd Mayweather would stop Colin Greer. We are two grand. Two we shook grand. hands. Did we I said, I'm going to take your money off you. If I don't get the money off you, I'm going to punch your fucking head He's in. He's been I'll looking look forward to this day for the last <laughs> Yeah. Four I'm getting weeks. people tweeting us and messaging really? us. Really? Yeah. When you say did, people, you mean seven? <laughs> over the, the no, past I, seven weeks? I had nine people. <laughs> nine, nine people. Nine. Say, did Brendan give you money yet? I said, no. But I if told you, I'm gonna why would you text me in the night of the fight? Remind me. I made so many goddamn bets. I also made serious money off the fight, so I'll give you two grand. <laughs> nice. I got you, man. Nice. Good. Why are you looking so skinny? I've been dieting, right? I've been I've been trying all these... been listening to Glenn uh, on that intermittent fasting. It took five years to wake up and finally listen to been me. Having the Glenn high, knows his shit. Yeah, he does. Having the high-fat stuff, bulletproof shit. Oh, you're trying that. to... Are you going all keto? I've, I've been doing it a little bit. I've not been uh, fully balls this deep. This is the skinniest but. I've seen you. Yeah, I'm looking good, mate. I'm looking you good. You look like you're like any skin here. It's fucking. You <laughs> well, look that, like you got AIDS. That, <laughs> that's actually a compliment coming from you. I know. I know. <laughs> Isn't it? I know. No, you look good, good, man. <laughs> Thank you. But you did the intermittent fasting, so because I I've been doing intermittent fasting for yeah, I don't like know a, how long? Forever. Is, Welcome to 2017, T. Yeah. It's fucking eight hour window to eat. You, you know, I've I've always been old school where it's like keep off carbs after after dinner time. And you lose weight because when I was a fighter, that's what I used to do. You know, that's from your boxing. Day, yeah, right? I, I was. That's all I was about. Yeah, but then you were training your ass off and shredding a shitload of calories. But even but now, you're not. But even then, so you got to do everything you. But possibly even then, would can, this diet right? not be good? For, good for that if you're training? I don't know. Yeah, it, it is. Right. But because you're not training day in day out and pushing your body to the limit, you, do, you you've got to do everything you can diet wise. Yeah, because you're not burning as many calories. But there as was you a were. time. When was it? I think when Sarah was pregnant with Jade, where you blew up. Yeah, I mean, I mean you were I like 230? 230, yeah. I, I like, was, you were thick. It's funny, because I, I fought at 168, and then I was 230, because I was drinking every night, eating crisps. You're just doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Yeah, loving life. Loving life. Not training. Yeah, not training. You know what, I, what I'm surprised with with you, and there's not, not very many fighters do it, you still constantly train all the time. Yeah. I mean, you're very vain. And Super you want pretty. to look like look good all the time. The only reason I do it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I, I, I hate it. I hate training. Whereas you love it. You're in the gym more than me. Every time I, I go to Box and Burn, you're there. I know. I love it. Well, I feel like it helps everything, though. Like, I always train early in the morning because I feel like I need it just to get my brain clear, mm. and, like get my energy up so I can do the shows. Like I do. So I'll have this show, which is two hours. I'll drive from here to the Valley to do Tom Segura's show for two hours. You know? So I feel like... 
If I your train schedule's first, full on, right? So yeah, you've but, got to be sharp up here and feel. Yeah, like I want to feel good. good. So I, f- yeah. I feel like it. Like I, if I don't work, I can tell. If I don't work out and just come to the studio, I'm not as sharp. Like I don't like my brain's not processing yeah. stuff. Yeah. As good. You know, I had them um, brain tests uh, last year at the Cleveland Clinic in Vegas where they do the test former fighters, MMA fighters and boxers. And the doctor said there, the best thing for your brain is exercise. Really? Yeah, because I was asked, because I was worried about all the punches I've had on my face. And yeah, he said, the, the number one thing you can do is exercise. Well, we have the people who's got Parkinson's disease in Box and Burn like four times a week now. Yeah. I see yeah. them all the time. In yeah. yeah. And it's so good for people with Parkinson's, boxing, like real good. It's motor skills. Yeah, because I feel like, because when I hit mitts, like there will be such a long combo. I feel like that helps my brain. Yeah. It's just like, you're concentrating. But how the, the fuck, right? but, but if you're not doing box or anything with coordination, like if you're just doing deadlift or squats, I don't see how that helps your brain. No. I think when you, when like neuromuscular recruitment. So like you, whenever you perform an exercise especially if it's heavier and you've got to recruit a lot of muscle fibers in your body whatever exercise you're doing that all comes from here your brain's got to be switched on to fire the right muscles Makes for sense. it to work yeah like when you're out running you can switch off and it's yeah. just one piece unless you're doing sprints and a lot of intervals but you're boxing you're thinking all the time like you, you it's a full body workout you're working your legs your ass your core your shoulders yeah, your, so your you brain sharp yeah I feel like, uh, do you ever feel like Glenn's kind of getting too big for his britches? Like, I feel like he trains Travis Barker, and then the Kardashians want to train with him. Yeah. And he's, like, acting all big time now. I know. Yeah, I just went with his head, you know. <laughs> Isn't it like, weird? Like, 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 trainer of the stars? Like, four years ago, he, he was working in a fucking office. Like, fat, <laughs> over weird. Well, five year, five years ago, four years ago, over weird. Like, know, man. He, he was, <laughs> Tony's concept of time is just ridiculous. He thinks, like, two months is two years. That's over, how it goes. Man. Yeah, over weird, nothing going for him. And then the turn, <laughs> that, then the turning point. He met me, and, and now look met, at him. And then he met me. Tony <laughs> saved you two saved my life. See if these. That's life. why we brought you here because we want a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Well, the way I met Glenn because when I was training for a fight, we'd run the fucking track all the time. Right. And Glenn, because Glenn can run like the wind. Glenn, they put in front of me like a rabbit, so I chase try and keep up with Glenn. <laughs> that was like my first real job in, uh, in strength and conditioning, just be Brendan's rabbit. Just yeah, it was a nightmare. As fast as I could. Yeah, that, them them runs were horrible. Oh. I remember them was the, for you the the and when me when I used to do them the worst thing like you get nervous before them because you know how so awful track workouts are horrible. Yeah. You know I mi- see I miss those. Yeah, like I would go, I would not to that extent to that level where I'm about to die. But I would go do that every Friday still if my mm. knee was good. How how you feel after is unbelievable. Yeah. Like it, you just feel so good after a track workout. But you you're doing you doing the before Santa injury. Monica stairs now. Oh. And the Santa Monica stairs is actually, although it's physically very hard, mentally it's easier because you're For sure. Because you just walking up the steps or jogging up the steps. It's mm. it's pretty easy compared to them interval fast track runs. Oh my we were God. Because we do what? With 800, 600, 400, well, we 200. Do, we do uh, two 800s with a minute rest. No, we, we use the heart rate monitor for your. It'd get below one, 120. As soon as it hits, as soon again. as the heart I think it was 140. That was 140. As soon as your heart rate hits 140, you go again. Ready to go again. <sighs> We've done two And it's just all about trying to get it down to 140 in as short a time as possible. So right. we do it at the Santa Monica Community College, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Them training camps were fucking. Beasts, mate, and super beasts. I, much more professional than when when I was training for professional fights, because like back then I kind of did my own schedule and and trained when I wanted. Like with you, That's we trouble. had a set a set know. schedule. I no, know. but before I met you, you were kind of doing that as well. Kind of, well, when I was in Denver, I wasn't. But the, before I had you as like a trainer, I, you know, I was trying to find my way, so I do kind of figure out my own thing. But I was always super professional. Like I always had my own schedule, but you can't be your own head coach. No, definitely not. Like you can't have fucking, you know, Michael Vick running your team as a head coach. Like yeah. he needs to be told what to do. Yeah, as well, what a coach is really good for is, is mindset. And I yes. just recently wrote, wrote a, a blog for this. Like the minutes before going into the cage, it's like, it, or, or, the, or the ring for me, it's like that, that them moments there, it's like all about make your coach. Break. Yeah, mm-hmm. make, make a break. break. It's all about your coach's positivity and yeah. the words that he says, but they can't be too positive where it's like fake, you know, where I've had trainers before. We're like, come on. And you can and you can tell that coaches get nervous too, you know? For sure. 
I got nervous when 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 you were fighting Matt McRion. This is on the John Jones Gustavan Bill. Yeah, I know. Pay per view, first time I'd ever been in the cage for for a. Uh, that's MMA your first fight. time around the UFC, and that was a big fight. I'd say big coaches fight. could be in prone Toronto? to be, could yeah. Out. Yeah. yeah, coaches could be prone to be more nervous than the fighter because they don't have they can't do anything about it. It's experience level. Physical, you stood there watching it, but there's nothing you can do. All yeah. you can do is like communicate what you want to see. Right. But you physically can't do anything about what's going on. But it's on. like right before the fight, coaches are important. But to me, it was always like more of like the journey of like, because we, be- we were boys, best yeah. friends, still really close. Yeah. But it was more like we went through this together. Yeah. So it was like us versus them. Right. right? So yeah. it was like you, me, Henner, Lauren. Like I want more of my boys around me going yeah. into battle. Yeah. Yeah. Opposed Don't to like having like a, because I've had coaches before where they didn't put in the work, but they, they, like, they know the X's and O's. Right. It's just not the same. Right. And that's one of the t- reasons why I didn't want to train a, a fighters because I got too much emotionally involved. Like when you were fighting, it, it felt like I was fighting. I wanted you to win as much as I wanted to win yeah. when I was fighting. Yep. You know, and uh, and as well, like the, the, the pressure on the coach, Brennan's got a new coach. And, it's stressful. And it, it's like, if you perform bad, the first people, first person people go to was like, mm. ah, shit coach, shit coach. Yeah. But not only that, the, the, the big thing with, with that, this is the first time I coached anyone. It was like, we were boys. I yeah, was I scared that you'd get hurt. And I, I really didn't want you to get hurt. I wanted you to win so, so bad. Know. You know? Uh, yeah, we had we had some fucking great times. We had some fun. Yeah. It was a beast. We had some fun. Yeah, it was great. I remember during them track workouts, speaking of mindset, when you were like, you know, basically dying on them track workouts, just feeling it. And he, he, you'd be shouting like, think about why you're doing it. Why are you doing it? Yeah. Why are you doing it? And I always stuck with me that. It's like, you yeah. know, think about why you're doing it because I'm yeah. sure you're second guessing yourself when you're absolutely fucked. It's much like, easier to why the think about why you're doing it when you have a f- actual like opponent. Yeah, like, oh, now yeah. it's a little different. Now That's it's... what I mean. Like now you still work, work your ass off in the gym. I mean, you pose a bit more, you take a few more selfies and all that shit. <laughs> but still, you still work, and you know yeah, what yeah. I mean. My I, my problem is when it, when I'm doing the stairs. I remember was uh, Klitschko. How many did did he do on the stairs? He did twelve. They like, do so. If you ever done the stairs, like, if I, how many did we do when I was in camp? I think we did eight, eight to ten. Yeah, ten would be like a big day. Yeah, oh, typically yeah. eight. Now I'll do, now I'll do six, six to eight. But so I'll run one, then run all the way around. Run one, yeah. run all the way, and I'll do six that way. So See, it's actually different. more work, but different. It's not as intense. Klitschko, for his normal workout, would do. 10 like this which is insane yeah ridiculous i always think about that when, I, when i'm tired of thinking about klitschko doing that like god damn what especially based on the size of him as well you well, know what, well I mean? what we used to do we you'd start at the top and then you'd run down and back up and then have a minute rest right like like a fight and you'd but you'd get down and up in within two minutes I'd which fly is down and which up, is though. as fast as you can you know uh going down's harder than going up <laughs> and you'd be hitting every step yeah and then then we'd always finish with fast footwork shadow boxing, yep. like moving your feet and all that. Yep. Remember that? See, I miss that good. shit. Yeah, I don't miss. The, I don't miss fighting at all. I, I I miss the walkout. I miss like the camaraderie, like the the training camps. I miss the work. I don't miss like getting in the cage. Right. The only thing I really miss is is winning, and then like you you put on a pedestal. Like I mean, you kind of get that now when you're going around all these uh, on stage and all. Way that. more so, so now. Yeah, yeah, you do. Fuck, I don't, you know, I, I, I don't get nothing now. So that's the kind, that's the hardest thing from retiring is is you 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 haven't got people like kissing your ass. It's not so much kissing your ass, but but putting you on that pedestal where it's like it does feel good yeah. when everyone's like, oh, well done, you done great, oh, you're great, and looking up here. I don't, don't care what anyone says, that shit feels good. But that's why, like, uh, you look at like uh, a Golden Boy production, like you look at like Oscar De La Hoya, like he's doing interviews on ESPN and all that stuff now or you look at like a Dana White where as they get a little taste of the fame and then now you see them they, they, everyone's right. searching that out yeah. Yeah, and, and then, it, it's not it's not an evil thing or nothing like that but once you're like oh man you know you yeah. get that attention you can see these guys who had it before like they don't want to go away Yeah, I, I googled Canelo Triple G the other day and I was just going through Google Images and it was hard to find one image of just those two facing off without Oscar De La Hoya in the middle. Right. Every single image had Oscar De La Hoya somewhere. Like, yeah. Even even Floyd here. Mayweather when uh, Javante Davis fought, yeah. you know, not this last fight, he had a terrible fight, but before that, when he went be, to England, it'd right? be Javante Davis's night. Yeah, and Floyd would grab the yeah. mic before. I'd be like, yeah. dude, 
Let him get his shine. When Floyd's mind, yeah. it's like, there's cameras, that's me. When he, went to, cameras, when he me. went to England to fight that like Liam Walsh, it was just Mayweather show. But it, when you grow up, like like Callan, too, if there's a ca- if there's a uh, camera or a mic in front of... I mean, Callan's on... Po- he's yeah. he's so used to it, he's just drawn to it. You know, mm, yeah. it's just... It, it's his thing. And and it's like a switch goes off in your head. It's like, well, you change, and it, and he's on and he, on his game, and he's funny as fuck with that shit happening. And then there's... Then I've been around people who've been in Hollywood so long, like with Mario Lopez. Like, he's been on Hollywood so long, he can't get out of the mode. Brandon, how are you doing? Good to see you, buddy. I'm like... <laughs> Why are you talking like that? <laughs> I'm great, man. How are you doing? Like, do, you got to quit talk, talking like a normal person. Right. Do you have full makeup on? I sure do, pal. How's your day going? <laughs> all right, man. Talk to me like a goddamn human being. I'm all right. We're here in Hollywood with Brendan Shaw. I'm like, dude, you are driving me nuts right now. <laughs> yeah. AC Slater, you you went down a bad rabbit hole, my man. Yeah, this where whole- they're just they're used to that. Where they're always on. Yeah. Like Hollywood, I can't stand it when people are always, they always on. They can't switch it off. They can't ever switch it off. Hollywood does some crazy shit to people. No, I was at Hollywood just the other day. Uh, with, I took the kids there, the wife, and I've got two lads stopping with us from England. Done the touristy shit, walking around. And you've been on Hollywood Boulevard where all the stars are, and you see this, like people dressed up as... The worst part of LA, but yeah. Yeah, it's full of tourists. You see like SpongeBob SquarePants dressed up, Spider-Man, Batman, all that. Tough gig. So my daughter ran up to Minnie Mouse and seen Minnie, oh, Minnie Mouse, Minnie Mouse. And I said, oh. So I get a picture with my daughter Minnie Mouse. And you, you know, these people are working for purely for tips. So all I've got is 50s. So I'm like, oh. And Minnie, Damn, he gave Minnie, no, Minnie Mouse I, 50? Did, did I? Fuck. Minnie Mouse pulled it. I went and needed to change. Minnie Mouse pulled a big fucking fat water cash out of the pocket. And went, yeah, I'll give you change. I oh, went, Minnie Mouse sucking dick on the side then. <laughs> No, these tips, mate. So I give the 50, gives me two 20s. I says, just give me seven bucks. So I give a $3 tip, right? God, dog, $3? For a picture. <laughs> $3? And you flash the 50 in front of her face? Uh, you know what? Go ahead and just give me, uh, you know what? I'm going to give you a dollar. Can you give me $49 back? If I'm mini, I'm like, you shitting me? But Fuck listen, your dollar. So, so Wow. <laughs> Three dollars for a fucking picture with your kid, and you had a fifty, and you flaunted it in her face and got changed. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> and then but, you but, so, take so, for the next. So bit. <laughs> now I'm like, I thought, I thought three dollars is sound. So uh, I'll go down the Valley Park and I get hour later, and I pull me, I pull me twenty out to give him the pay for him. The guy gets the pen right to it. This is a counterfeit. <laughs> Fucking Minnie Mouse ripped oh, me off. Shit. Minnie yeah. Mouse. All fake. I, you know, I've just been a bulletproof there and Tight I pulled it out. move, Minnie. So that's why she wasn't. Jokes that on was you. Big time. But look, t- tell me if you notice. Damn, Minnie Mouse. Like, yeah, no problem, bitch. All fake? No, no, just one. Oh, this one's completely fake. Yeah, you can tell now. 100%. Yeah. But, but when... You know what? It's tough. If you didn't say anything, it's super tough to tell. Yeah. That little whore. Especially, right? Who do you know who's being ripped off of fucking Minnie Mouse? This fucker right here. You know what I mean? So basically, Damn, she that just bitch. stood on Hollywood Boulevard all day just swapping out $50 bills for fake 20s. What a lot of hustle. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm surprised you didn't drive down there and beat the piss out of Minnie Mouse. You know it's a <laughs> small black dude in that thing, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. So I never noticed because, you know, you're getting money off Minnie Mouse. The last thing you think it's going to be fake. But my daughter's running out for the Spider-Man. And then, then Spider Man's there, so I get to me cash. Went, got to picture with Spider Man. Give him three dollars as well, and he said what you said. He come up to me face close. He went, "What the fuck's this?" Well, he said, "What the fuck's this?" Yeah, I went, "What?" He went, "Give me ten dollars." I went, "I went, what? No, three dollars. You get a picture with me, daughter. Three dollars. Where are you from?" I went, "I'm from England." You cheap motherfucker. Give me ten dollars. I went, "Fuck you, me." I'm on Hollywood Boulevard. You're about to beep Spider Man. Yeah, me and Spider Man, fucking head to head. Damn. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I would have headbutt the fuck out of Spider Man. <laughs> so these these fuckers on Hollywood Boulevard who's dressed up, they're big hustlers and they're getting so much money from Pieces tourists. Of shit. Yeah, too. give me that back. Give me that back. Do you know yeah, there you go. You, <laughs> man. Did you see that? What are you gonna do with that fake okay. money? I was a, I was in bulletproof, I was about to give them it. Tip, I was like, tip, oh. go back to Hollywood Boulevard and give Minnie Mouse twenty dollars for a picture. Not then she just really got right she's really got twenty dollars. Give Minnie Mouse this fake twenty and then punch her in the dick. Couldn't believe it, man. Wow. <laughs> what a bunch of pricks. Unbelievable. How about Spider-Man trying to hustle you for $10? Spider-Man, man. he got in me face. But these these tourists... Dude, you should have... Dude, you had a, such an opportunity to... Your kids were like, oh my God, Dad beat the 
hiss out of Spider Man. <laughs> Jake King, King, King. And then Wolverine's like, hey, like, he King. <laughs> Just beat the fuck out of all the superheroes. <laughs> Hulk's like, I want none. Like, you getting something? Beat the fuck out of Hulk. Yeah, I will be a real hero in front of me, daughter. For I that know, one. man. I'm and you had made you made the news for sure. Oh yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> imagine the news story: some crazy English ex boxer just, just goes you on top the of shit fucking mini, just fucking <laughs> round and pounding elbows, like, <laughs> bitch. Just not stop. Your kids cry. No, Dad, stop. <laughs> yeah, mate. So that, that's what we're talking Damn. about. Hollywood being crazy. Hollywood's crazy. Well, for sure, don't go down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's touristy things. It's the first thing I said when you go, oh, I was in. I was on Hollywood Boulevard. So I'm like, why? Yeah. Why Nasty would you go there? there? It's right. horrible. There's, there's, a, uh, there's a star on the ground with Donald Trump on, on his name, and people's getting pictures, like sticking their fingers up in Pissing front of the thing. And stuff. Yeah, it's putting the arses on it. And yeah, someone, so, on it. I know someone shit on it, and then also someone like uh, fucked it up, like yeah, got right. a, like a pitchfork and like fucked it all up. And they, now they monitor it pretty close. Right. It's yeah. Kind of weird. Like, who are you going to say? I, I mean, mean, if you've you got, got nothing better to do with your like, time, then do that. <laughs> Yeah, this town's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy, mate. It's Jesus crazy. Christ. This town is mad. We were talking about cyclists in this town. Have you had any problems with cyclists? Uh, listen, the thing I'm talking about cyclists, unless you're getting paid, unless you're competing in an actual Tour de France, why in the fuck are you in the middle of the road and in all that gear? Right. Unless you've actually qualified for a legit race, don't wear all the spandex. Don't have that bike. Don't have the matching helmet. Yeah. Don't have all those fucking sponsors all over your jersey. No, like you're sponsored. You bought that. You bought it. You bought that. What are you doing? What are you doing? And if you're gonna be in the, if you want to pretend you're a car and act like you have the <laughs> yeah. right to you and be a car, yeah. then follow the car fucking rules. I want you to stop at the stop signs. Yeah. Right. Stop at the stop lights. Go on the freeway. It doesn't work just for you when you want. <laughs> go on the freeway. See it how drives that works. Me nuts, man. <laughs> yeah. Like down San Vicente on Sundays, they go down there with all in the gear. Unless you're a Fucking team, if you're, I want to talk to the goddamn captain. Unless you're a team, <laughs> why are you guys all in the middle of the road? Yeah. Yeah. There's always like 70 of them in a group. And they're like, head, they'll heads jump down. you. By the way, they'll, they'll jump you too. The, the thing, well, the, the hardest men in the world. Have you ever tried to open your door when one, whoa, bike, bike? And they go fucking mad. Yeah. Go mad. Have you noticed how they all have no ass? <laughs> Zero, they're all Their flat ass is flat and got a little belly. Yeah. And, it just, oh, and then they wear all the gear. Fuck you, man. Yeah, they're the worst. It is strange. Yeah, I love that. They wear the sponsorship stuff and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you, man. And then they wear the shoes in the coffee shop. Click, 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 oh click, click, click. You can hear them Dude, walking unle- on the stuff. Unless you got Lance Armstrong on fucking speed dial, don't wear that shit yeah. around here. If I ever wear that stuff, let's just stop being friends. Yeah. Big yeah, time. You guys excited for the fight? Yeah, I cannot wait. wait, mate. Cannot wait. I, w- I was more excited for the Floyd and Connor fight, which I Because put- you didn't know what to expect. Yeah. With this one, yeah. I got a lot of abuse from the boxing community for seeing that, but it was true, you know? Well, and the pay-per-view numbers show that most mm. people felt sided with you, like, because we didn't know what to expect. You knew, it's like, God, one guy's don't know, but he does have this background. Floyd, best of all time, but he's older. There's this X factor where we had no idea what to expect. So you're going to tune into that. With this fight, they're both two traditional boxers in the best of our lifetime. You, you know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. it's still gonna it's gonna do well. I bet it. You know, it's around one point five million pay per view buys. It's not gonna make history, but right. it's 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 a great fight. I think the Floyd Connor fight actually has a trickle effect that helps. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like Ostel Hoy is hating on it, and he was like, "God, oh, it's a spec that shit." Like, dude, you're a moron. Yeah, because you're hating on that for the wrong reasons. That's right. gonna help your fight. Yeah, because a lot of more people has been talking about that fight, even though it was seen. It's not getting the retention that it should because of that, because of the Conor Floyd fight. People wouldn't be talking about it at all if it wasn't for that fight. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah people are, uh, boxing's more in the mainstream now. Like, you're not going to have, like, Triple G's on Breakfast Club. It's a little bit me- mainstream, but they're not on Good Morning America. It's not on ESPN very, that much. Like, this week, right. have you seen much on ESPN or anything? No. I think that's partly down to the personalities as well. They're not huge personalities, are they? Triple G's just not a big draw. Yeah, well, he's English ain't the best. Big That's drama, big like drama show, Max. Yeah. I bring drama show. It's like, God <laughs> yeah. damn it. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't know what he's saying. And then Canelo, the he can speak English, but obviously Spanish is what he talks, mainly. Yeah. The, this this fight sold on their talents more right. than anything. Which is very, I think very th- rare. I mean, can't remember the last fight. that This is probably the biggest fight ever that's just sold on, on talents. Yeah. Can you think of anyone else who's just sold on pure, pure talent? On talent. Not in the last 10 years. They've all had something marketable about them. Mm. Where these two, if you think about it, there's nothing marketable. 
uh, Canelo's ginger, a redhead uh, Mexican, which is, well, I guess, that's that's it. That, that That's it. That's all immortable. I well, think really, for, for people who know what they're talking about, from bell to bell, it's going to be yeah, unbelievable. 100%. And that's, See, that's what so. everyone's, what's, I don't think everyone's I don't going on. I don't think on. it's going to be some barn burner fight. I don't, I don't think it's going to be some classic... Uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robot. I think it's going to be super calculated. It's going to be uh, a high level boxing at the highest level. I think um, Triple G comes out. I think he establishes jab. Canelo's going to try and figure that out to get on the inside. I think uh, Triple G is going to get out early, win some rounds. I think Canelo's going to do well. well. We'll get to the exact breakdown, mm. but I don't think it's going to be the slobber knock everyone's expecting. I don't think there's a knockout either. See, I. I don't, I don't know about the knockout. Maybe it's hard to tell, but I really do think as soon as Triple G gets punched, he's one of these. He likes a fight. He, yeah. I think he'll start fighting with him. He doesn't mind getting hit, you know. So I think he will start. He doesn't mind getting him. hit if he's fighting a, like against a Kell Brooks. He didn't mind getting hit like that uppercut Kell Brooks landed was power. And if you throw combinations, you can hit Triple G. I think he's too smart to get in a, a straight up slugfest with Canelo because that's the only way Canelo's going to win. If you sit in the pocket and trade with Canelo, that's his, his best chance of winning in, in tight. I think Triple G, when he wants to box box, like you look against uh, like Lemieux, we mm-hmm. had to actually show. Like, yeah. We were like, oh, he doesn't have a jab. Fuck. He just beat the shit out of him with the jab. The best jab I've ever seen fucking yeah. box. Yeah. It's like yeah. Klitschko probably. Right. So when he came out and jabbed the piss out of him, he's like, no, it's there. I just want to give you guys a show. With Canelo, there's so much on the line. I think he's going to go back to his traditional boxing and j- establish that jab, and it's going to be Canelo's job to figure it out. What's interesting is no matter what the outcome of this fight, you can you're gonna at the end of it you're gonna be able to go okay well that I saw that coming. But you think yeah. for all of yeah. them, so Canelo and points you'd be like all right I could have predicted that Triple G knockout you could, okay I predicted that Canelo stoppage could have seen that Fuck, so I, really yeah I feel yeah. like any outcome is is is, is highly possible. Well let's another. go I I made a list here and we let's go and see who give the advantage to hand speed Canelo. Oh. Triple G. No, Canelo's, Canelo's for far sure. more explosive. Yeah, he's, he's got smaller, a wider variety. He's smaller, he's, smaller, he's faster. Well, and and even even uh, Triple G's trainer, they go, we know he has an advantage as far as speed, hand mm-hmm. speed. Oh, yeah. So we're training for that. Mm-hmm. We're adapting oh, to really? that. Because remember, Canelo also started off lighter weight class, right? And he's built up to this. He's younger. Yeah. I, I, hand speed, 100% is Canelo. Well, for, for a middleweight, he's, a, he's, yeah, he, he's probably the most explosive middleweight he, for a long time, he's, he's, he's a bit so smaller, fast. so which I guess you can see that, that that's faster as well. But accuracy, you haven't got on there, but accuracy, I think uh, Triple G is pretty accurate, especially when he was when we've seen that. Well, as a we'll, move get, fight. we'll get to that with offense, defense, right. like footwork, Triple G. Yeah, triple G, Canelo yeah. tends to defend kind of in the pocket and use a lot of waist movement and he's head so good at like that. this. And he's, he's so good at it. he's really good in the pocket, but. Over twelve rounds, that's he's going to get caught if he stand if he stays in there like that. He's yeah. going to get caught by Triple G. I, I, th- I think Triple G's footwork's underrated. Oh, it's unbelievable! Like, like I think he's a so, lot better athlete than people give he, him. Oh yeah, for. ridiculous! He doesn't he's have amazing to show amateur it. boxer, right? Ridiculous amateur boxer. Yeah, he should have won gold but got shafted. He came to box and burn what two years ago and did yeah. a media workout at our gym, and I watched him shadow box for probably five six rounds. And it was just ridiculous how he could go from the center of the ring to the ropes in like one, two steps. Smooth He's like a well. cat. Just smooth. smooth. Well, like just, silent. And like from corner to corner in like three steps, just covers so much ground with his feet. He's like ring generalship and his ability to cut his opponent down with such minimal effort is just ridiculous. See, that, that's what's amazing. It looks about like this he's fight. just walking. And yeah. He's just, he's just like I, I think perfectly I think unbalanced as, as at all times. As far as footwork. It goes to Triple G. I think he's a better athlete, and his boxing footwork's better. And we've seen him use it in uh, the Danny J- the Jacobs fight. Yeah. So I'm using Lemieux fight. Yeah. But f- the footwork for Canelo, he's not he's not going to win that category of footwork. But what Canelo does well is when he gets in tight, mm. like his ability to get in tight. He doesn't have to move a lot. That's right. not his thing. So those styles are what make this fun. Offense. So Triple G. Uh, I mean. The both of them got fantastic offense. It's like, it, de- it depends. It's I would say, style I would offense. see. I would probably see Canelo's offense is. He's been flawless. He's been absolutely flawless. He's last look, few. Look fights. at their resumes though. Like, who's the best guy Triple G beat? Like, like to me, like offense. If I'm going to go by all right, the the guys that they beat at the highest in, level. In, in, ter- like, in terms of his Canelo's performance or his better, opponents, Canelo's fought and landed against better competitors than Triple G. 
That's debatable. Really? Because if R- you look at up, the last two fights, Danny Jacobs bring, is a better his... fighter than, than Chavez Jr. What'd you say? Da- well, Danny you look, Jacobs is a better boxer well, than, we, than Chavez so Jr. So you can go, you, you can compare, if you're just going uh, based off last fight, well, yeah, fucking yeah. Chavez Jr. shit. But I, I, th- I think past opponents doesn't really have, 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 I don't does, think, I don't think it plays a part. What? Like... Uh, so Mayor Khan, you know Miguel. So Miguel Cotto, James Kirkland, they both fought James Kirkland. There's Floyd not one Mayweather, legitimate Austin middleweight Trevor. on that on that list apart from Chavez Jr. He's the only heavier dude. All the rest are coming up in weight. Yeah, that's true. They're, 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 they're all they're all welterweights or Much junior middle, middleweight. La- Lara was up. a tough one. Lara's Lara tough won that fight. Not according he to the judges. He outboxed the shit out of Canelo. Mm, yeah, but that's not what I'm saying. If it go, if it goes to the cards. Canelo's going to get the nudge from the judges just because he's the golden boy, he's the marketing guy, but that's a separate issue. Yeah. Well, he fought Liam Smith. Liam Smith is a a great fighter, and Liam was on on my podcast as a guest, and he told us on that show that on the win, he said he thought, "Wow, I'm I'm much bigger than Canelo." Mm. But then when they got in the ring, Canelo put that weight on. He said, "He was like a bodybuilder." Triple G is not going to be that much bigger because you remember Triple G is older. Triple G would be. 35 by the time I think, I think this he's fight. 30, 36 I think I think he'll turn 35 35. or 36 but he's a lot older Canelo oh, yeah, he's 35 yeah. 235 so 35 Canelo's 27 so Canelo's still gonna add size remember mm-hmm. so Canelo although they say yeah he's a smaller guy he's not that small so when, I don't tri- I don't think Triple G has that much of a size advantage I do because he's 5'10 yeah I agree I don't think he'll have that much of a size Triple G's 5'10 yeah I don't really? think there'll be that much of a size difference When what interesting what you said about what Liam Smith said because he said at the weigh-in, he felt miles bigger than him. And then when he got in there, this, they planned on Canelo putting on 15 to 20 pounds, but he put on like 25. And then Liam went in and put, I think he said he put like 15 or 17 on. And then when he got face to face from the ring, he Different was like, animal. holy so shit. Was See, when, shit. When we talk about offense too, remember Canelo likes to slow the pace. I think Canelo, you look at the comp strike numbers, Canelo aims to, to land around or throw around 30, 40 punches around. Which isn't that much. He like takes he's, rounds off. He's very calculated, but he doesn't. He goes in spurts, then he takes it off. Spurts takes, takes it, it off. off, but thirty to forty, so it's not that much. Then you get Triple G. Triple G is a straight up machine as far as he's a volume puncher. Right. So he's just he, relentless. He's, he just he will not stop. Coming. He yeah. keeps coming. If, if, if Canelo does what he's done in a lot of these fights and take that thirty to forty second walk where he Triple G he takes that space or he mid rounds like I've seen him like rounds five to six, seven, eight. He, he Kind of disappears for a little but bit. But he can do that against his. He can do that against these guys because he's he's usually the bigger guy see, and he that's can the keep same that thing. distance see, against Triple G. He ain't going to be able to switch off for a second. No, no. It's because of his you style. Don't think he realizes that. I think he I does. Yeah, he I really, think he, he does. But also, with but triple, says, can triple he break G? that habit in a fight? That's Here, the here's key. the thing: Can Triple G break the habit of going? Oh, let's exchange. Let's do that. Let yeah. me let me get in this Mexican right. standoff with you. No yeah. way. Because no. with like uh, Kel Brooks, where he's like, "Ah, you're a small guy. Let's see what happens." Boom. Mm-hmm. If Canelo, if you sit in their pocket and trade that with Canelo, he's going to put you down. Yeah. Tr- Canelo's going to gonna land on, on Triple G. There's no so doubt about that. Here's, here's, he's an here's amazing here's nothing counter with the puncher. Kind of strike numbers. And he's who, right. Who do you think is more elusive? Defense. <sighs> the, that's, that's it's great. Both, they're both top of the, top of the games. Yeah. Uh, Canelo is so elusive with a slip and coming back with that, that start. He's also inside fighter. Yeah. So I'd say Canelo's more elusive. He's more elusive on Kami, the, in- Kami, on the inside. Strike, he gets hit less. On the inside, right. on the outside, on the footwork and all that, I think uh, Triple G's... Just more, just overall, he has better... If, if you go by sheer stats, he has better numbers than Triple G. Oh, really? But what I love about what Triple G... What stats are them? Not getting hit. What, what I love about... Hit less. Right. What about... If you go back to that David Lemieux fight, what I love about Triple G is so like, economical of his defense. He's like walking you down the whole time and it's just that tiny little step back. That jab is That tiny little filthy. step back, back on you. Tiny little step back, back on you. It's a little bit of head movement when he's in range. But with Canelo, it's all pretty static. It's all like a lot of like slipping and catching and staying in the pocket. A lot of waste Calculated, movement, like though. I said. Yeah, he doesn't fuck. waste movement. No, no. He's also a, com- a combination puncher. So but over 12 well, rounds, he's, that's going to get him caught. Maybe. He's going to get but, caught. But I, th- I he- think they're both going to get caught. It's mm-hmm. who, who's going to go down from it. Right. But so not- it's going to be a battle of the chins, I think. That's the best way to sum it up. They're both going to land on each other. It's just going to be who can who can take the I don't know. You know, it's, it's, this, is, this will only be, if it goes the distance, it'll only be Triple G's second 12-round fight. Here's the other thing you got to think of. So let's go to experience, experience and politics. So experience, you're going to give it to who, Glenn? 
Triple G, just because of his so amateur hold there. background. Yep, amateur background. Who do you give it to? Triple G. All right, so peep this. So you can give it to Triple G. <laughs> he's thought from, this, yes. <laughs> so you can give it to Triple G for his experience, which most people do. Like, oh, he's had 300 amateur fights. He's a uh, silver medalist in the Olympics. Some think he should have won gold. Yeah. Now, when, you, when I think experience, and Triple G uh, has a ton of fights experience. Yeah. That's fine. Let's talk about real experience as far as... Pro fights. Pro fights. Yeah. Think of the fights Canelo has been in. He's fought Floyd Mayweather. It got over 2 million pay-per-view buys. Yeah. He fought in the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, sold out against Liam Smith, who yep. sold 50 tickets. <laughs> so he, he's been in the big stage, fought Cotto. He's fought the biggest of the big. He's had, I think, eight fights in Vegas. Triple G's never fought in Vegas. Really? He's never fought in Vegas. Do you think, ever. Do you think and all Canelo's, that stuff is going to play a factor lost. in the fight, though? Yep. And, and in here, what way? Here, why? Canelo's only lost with Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather. It was too soon for him. People still... I, and I thought yeah. Floyd Mayweather pitched a shutout. Yeah. Some of those judges gave Canelo Fucking rounds. draw. Yeah, he, one judge gave it a draw. So if it goes to decision, you don't think those same judges who are out there, they're the same guys, there's going to be a few of those guys the same... You don't think Canelo has a huge advantage from the experience of being a huge Las Vegas draw? If he goes to the points, paper 100%. Draw. If it yeah. goes to the cards, definitely. Well, which, which most likely will. And that's not the question. The question here's is the experience. Other thing. Who's the promoter? Golden Boy. Right. Who makes them? Also a Canelo You've guy. drifted off the question. The next question no, is experience. Because it's, yeah, because experience in big fights in Vegas. Right. In, so... It's but I don't think to, that comes easy. down to experience. I think it comes down to who who's making the most money for Vegas no, and for Golden no, no. Boy. It goes it's Canelo, experience. right? Cause, so cause, if it goes to points, who's gonna who's gonna be the most marketable out of this decision? Canelo. Okay, well if it's a close fight, it's a few one or two rounds either way, Canelo's gonna get it all day. Exactly. When what but also it, when you go experience the experience of being in a big fight at the highest level, by far Canelo. By far. Mm-hmm. Your amateur career that it, yeah, it's helped you to a certain extent, but as far as big fights against big names, yeah, but Canelo has way more. Experience. I agree but with in that. In ring experience, uh, who I mean, who's boxed more rounds? You know, but Canelo's got more experience because of he's boxed way more twelve rounds. He's boxed like Shane Mosley and like you said Floyd, where uh, Triple G's just been knocking everyone out apart from his last fight. You know, See, and this other thing, Canelo's not really. It, it, they like to paint this as a uh, it's someone's getting knocked out. If you look at Canelo's history, he's not really a knockout artist. Canelo? No, he's, he's not. not. He does combinations, and you know you've heard uh, Triple G's trainer talk about this. He 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 slaps yeah. a lot. Trip slap, and like mm-hmm. Kirkland, he'll knock out. But at the highest level, he's really not knocking the higher level guys out. Yeah. Where Triple G will knock you out. I think as far as straight up knockout power, it goes to Triple G. So if if you look at his knockouts, James Kirkland, shot fighter. Gets his style is there to be knocked out. Uh, Amir Khan was outboxing him for a few rounds and then. But Amir, got, got Amir Khan's always had. But he's, he's a 140, 147 fighter. He's not a middleweight. But look, so Miguel Cotto, small guy. Also, Miguel Cotto is a guy who he's past his prime in that fight. Yep. Didn't knock him out. Yep. Laura, monster. Didn't knock him out. Didn't even drop him. Yep. He should have stopped Smith Chavez Jr. Liam Smith had never been on the floor in his life. I know. And. He got knocked out off with a body, body shot. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking and of yeah, accuracy. I, I, I like Liam Smith, and I know he's going to show you my boy. He's not the same level as these guys. Like, when I'm talking, like, hot, I'm talking the upper, the, upper the echelon yeah, dudes, yeah, yeah. like Trout. You know, he's not, not, those upper, upper echelon guys, he's not knocking them out. Yeah. Where Triple G, you know, remember against Danny Jacobs, he, he, he knocked Danny Jacobs down. Yeah. Who's a complete monster. You're not talk, uh, he, he talking, recovered about, well from talking that. about Liam Smith. When he was in LA, it was uh, he started training camp again after the Canelo fight, and I was the first person to train with him after the Canelo fight, and I done mitts. I think you were there when I was doing the mitts. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was the fastest, most accurate person that I've ever yeah. held mitts for. It I, was unbelievable. And this was like twelve weeks after he's this. A, no, fight. he's a beast. He was a beast. So, but like you said. The next level, like imagine what Canelo was like, you know, mm. if Liam imagine Smith. That. That oh, I was going to say, was like, I, did, yeah. I did some pads with Liam Smith as well at the gym, and and I had the same same thing. Was, was, his, his his speed was ridiculous. He was like, like he couldn't struggle to like think about you know holding I mean? for Canelo or Triple. That's what G. I'm saying because you watch you watch Liam Smith in the ring, and he looks he looks like a. Not slow, but he doesn't look like an explosive no. fast fighter. That's but then when you've held punches from first, no, he's a, he's ridiculous. Smith is a freak. Yeah, 
So I think experience, but again, with the politics, that goes to Canelo because yeah. Golden Boy promotion, he's fought in Vegas. He's a mm-hmm. huge draw. If it goes to the cards, this is my prediction. I think Triple G is going to come out. He's going to be ahead on the cards, like maybe three to four rounds. And you know when it, whoever is uh, Lamp, Lampley or whatever, it's like, all right, I got it. Six <laughs> rounds of seven, John. You know, he does that bullshit. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, Le- Lederman. Yeah, yeah Le- Lederman, yeah. He's like, all right, here it is, you know? So, <laughs> okay, Jim. All right, Jim, I got it. six <laughs> rounds of seven. Shut up for Triple G. Anything else, you got to be crazy. It's not even a fight. <laughs> yeah. So he does that bullshit. So you got. So I think the f- you, you're going to be watching at home and you're like, damn, Triple G's kind of running away with this. Canelo's going to have his moments, and then if it's even a round where it's debatable, it goes to Canelo. I think mean, Canelo wins in a close decision. Mm. That's why I, but I, this isn't going to be the barn burner where I'll think it's going to be. I think it's going to be two of the of the highest level boxers of all time trying to outclass each other, and they're going to have their moments, they're going to have their spots. Yeah. Now remember that arena is going to be an all Canelo pro crowd. Right. So as soon as he up that uppercut lands, that crowd's going to. Explode. Yeah. So he's gonna have yeah. his moments, and he's gonna beat him. I I bet I bet Canelo wins like eight rounds. But you're gonna be at home, and be like, oh fuck, this is bullshit. Yeah. Then you get the rematch, and in the rematch is where you get your barn burner. Right. See, when, when if Canelo lands that big overcut and the crowd goes wild, I think that's going to be uh, a button that hits uh, Triple G and he's going to go fucking mad. Come, Come on, let's go. G. And that's going to turn the fight into that's, the great fight that we all want it to th- be. That's the thing with Triple G. It's like he's just, he's so mentally strong. Yeah. I just feel like nothing phases him at all. So we were talking about experience on the big stage and going through all the he's media the circus and all that. Name but I don't think, stage. I think, I think because he's so mentally strong, I don't think he even gives a shit but about with any of We haven't seen him on he's the big like, stage. So get with me him, in the ring and let me not being on the Maybe. With him not being in the big stage... And like you see, that little bit of less experience, maybe that's going to make it a better fight because he's not going to stay disciplined for the full fight. See, I think, I think he stays more disciplined. Like when he fought Lemieux, which wasn't a huge stage, he knew so Lemieux was such a knockout artist. He was so tentative and calculated. Mm-hmm. He just picked them apart. We're like, ah, oh, come on, put him away, man. And he did it eventually once he downloaded his data. Yeah. And I, I think in Canelo is going to come out. He's not going to, he's not going to take crazy risk. So those early rounds, you can get Triple G, again, stay behind the jab, kind of pick him apart a little bit. You might, come on, Canelo, get in there. Canelo will have his moments. I think Triple G I think he wins by decision. I think Triple G will control the first half of the fight. Me too. He'll control the distance and keep his jab and his little step back. This fight's about distance. And then I think Canelo will start to come on strong later rounds and start really letting his hands go. And if you watch a lot of Canelo's tapes and you you watch his training, there's so much body work. They're really playing to go to the body in Triple G. Right. So he's going to be inside. That, that That's his whole goal is to yeah. get inside. And the only time anyone lands against Triple G, if you're expecting Canelo to go in there and throw a huge you know, left hook or right hand and for it to knock out Triple G, that's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. It only happens in the transition of the combination. Because yeah. right. yeah. Danny yeah. Jacobs landed in exchanges. Yeah. You look at uh, um, Kel Brook. Kel Brook. Yeah. Combinations. Those yeah. first ones don't land. He blocks those. He avoids those. It's the third, fourth counterpunch, what, which Canelo's a way better counterpuncher. Right. What was interesting in that Kell Brook fight, when he stood in range with Triple G and had it out with him and let his hands go in threes and fours and well. a variety of he shots, well. he landed. When he, when he, but the, here's the difference. In those exchanges, as soon as Triple G connected, he was like, oh, shit. That well, zaps your confidence. How like, small he's so heavy-handed. And then he just go, and then he starts moving his feet to get out of there. Oh, I don't want any of this shit. And then as soon as you start moving your feet, then you're in trouble because he just cuts the ring down so well. See, that's, the, that's the problem. If they're, so if you're gonna exchange, if Canel's going to sh- exchange one for one, I feel like Triple G hits so hard, it's it's a game changer when he lands. Yeah, yeah. He broke Kell Brook's eye socket. Yeah, where Kell Brook's never the same. Uh-huh. His next fight was so scary to get in the eye. He's just not the same guy. Yeah. So so, so, so I, for twelve rounds, can Canelo have those exchanges and not deal with damage? I don't know. You, I'm sure you don't know this. You know Terrell Hendricks, who works for us at Box and Burn. He, oh, the, I love that guy. Yeah, he's the only guy ever to drop Triple G. He dropped him in sparring. Not many people know that. Abel Sanchez. Hey, bro. No, you said Glenn. only got it. You said only got ever drop, and I thought you were gonna say fight. You said sparring. Oh yeah, yeah, sparring. Yeah, yeah. 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 But even in sparring, who the fuck dropped the triple G? I and don't know. He said because no one talks about sparring. First rule of fight club. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not my sparring, so I can talk about other people's sparring. Yeah, that's, so that's good. Yeah, uh, and he said that his power was ridiculous. Like, it, like every time he hit him, it was like getting hit with a fucking baseball yeah, I heard bat. His jabs like. A yeah. shotgun blast. Yeah, yeah, he said he hated it. And uh, 
Terrell ended up having to retire, not from that spot, but from a little bit further on. He reconsidered his career after <laughs> no, sparring he had with Triple G. Ble- bleeding on the brain, not yeah. through from Triple G. sparring with Triple G? No, he sure it f- didn't help. He had f- no, it didn't help at all. But he said his power is unbelievable. And he's sparred with everyone. Terrell sparred with everyone. I, I spoke with uh, Matthew Macklin when he was in our gym about when he fought Triple G. That, that brutal body shot. I don't know if you remember that fight. He yeah. stopped Matthew Macklin oh, in the yes. second oh, round. I think it was a beast. And, and it's just like a. a yeah, it's, they've person, used man. it in the build up. Macklin goes down, he's just in agony on the floor. Yeah. Ah. And I was, I was talking to him about it in the gym, and he said, I've never. I've, you know, because he's been boxing for years and took body shots. He said that was just on another level. It felt like it had just a sledgehammer had just gone like Everyone right through his that. body. He said he just felt like he'd been like cut in half. He's just some so who's, who's Canelo fought? Who's the hardest hitter that Canelo's fought? Hardest puncher, like power puncher? Yeah. Well, let's have a look at the. Uh, uh, the I, on, on Canelo's opponents. Yeah, I don't know who. Cotto? Yeah, so that, that I mean. I mean, he fought Mosley, but is, and that's two then. Out, yeah, and Mosley's a lot smaller. Out of all those, I wouldn't say, I'd say Angulo's probably the heaviest handed, but I wouldn't say any of those are like real big punches. So I wonder how. I rep, I don't know. I, and, I th- and I think, well, we, we know that uh, Triple G's been fought harder punches than Canelo, right? Like Lemieux. He, he's, he can punch Bigger guys Canelo. too, yeah. Yeah. So let's see how Canelo copes with the power of Triple G once he starts landing. The, and the, those are the huge X factors in this fight. It's like, all right, so it, does Triple G hit as hard as everyone says? And we've never really seen Canelo get hit hard. Right. You know, we've never seen him get blasted. Mm. If he does get blasted, how does he respond? If he does get sat down, how does he respond? Because his only loss against Floyd Mayweather. I mean, he just got outclassed, like yeah. hit him, got outpointed. He never got dropped. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a real 50-50 fight. Like, I can't remember the last time was a fight that was so 50-50. I, I think, think, I think this is going to be our war, Gotti. Not as far as those wars, but as far as you're going to get three fights out of this. Yeah. Which I is great so. for boxing. Great right. for boxing. I hope so. And so who, 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 what's your prediction? I'm saying, I, I change my mind every day. It's ridiculous. But I think my instinct is triple G late stoppage. Yeah. I would see it once once Canelo opens up a little bit. Yeah, and then uh, I think I think Triple G late stoppage. I think Triple G is going to win on points. I think the uh, wow. I think the, uh, the both might even go down within the in the fight. You know, so I think I think it's going to. You said that you don't think it's going to be a great fight. I think it will. I, be no, I think great. it's going to be good. I don't think it's uh, and I, I think it's going to be a great fight and super technical. I don't think it's the barn burner that everyone thinks it's going to be. Right. Where it's just I don't think it's a slobber war. knocker. Yeah, no. yeah. They're both too calculated for that. Yeah. yeah. Go on, then, yours. I, I think Canelo wins in a decision. But uh, the general public going to be very upset with the decision. I think Canelo gets the decision. It's going to be a little suspect. And then yeah. we get a rematch out you get of a it. Rematch. I think, yeah. yeah. I think you're only picking that because your missus is Mexican. The last time you watched the Canelo fight like yours. And it was a fucking fiesta in that bitch, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. And the what fight was what, a fucking shit show. Who did, who did he fight then? Uh, Chavez Jr. Remember, it was All terrible. That was, oh, fuck. Well, that's yeah. a horrible terrible. fight. Yeah, yeah I, I, I felt like a goddamn I, I immigrant. Flags out and all that I felt like I was the immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for them motherfuckers to get out. <laughs> yeah, but exciting Mexican fights, food. exciting for, for boxing. Yeah, you got Mexican food as well. Yeah, <laughs> right. God damn it. Yeah, it uh, yeah, I'm excited for the fight though. Yeah, can't wait. We'll be in Phoenix watching it in Phoenix. We've got a Boxing Burn Academy in there. The night of the big fight. You're yeah, in yeah. Yeah, we're in Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm looking forward to that. So I watched the Mayweather McGregor fight in a hotel room on my laptop. Damn! No, yeah. Oh, we're, you, you guys are doing your Boxburn uh, certified certification shit? Course, in yeah. Phoenix. Yeah, we're out in Phoenix for sure. Plug it in that. Well, now would be the time. Yeah, it's, 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 I don't know what the gym's called, but it's it's in it's in Phoenix. You can find it on the Boxburn Academy dot com website where we teach trainers how to teach boxing. But yeah, what's so these certifications are basically you you, help, you trainers who have a background in training. You teach them how to uh, kind of add boxing to their yeah, workout. We teach trainers like how to wrap hands, how to box. It's a very Hold important, you, you know, how to box before you try and teach it and then how to hold the mitts and how to work on the heavy bag and all that. Yeah, it's a it's a one-day course. There. It's, it's been going the, well, right? Yeah, it's going, yeah, it's it's going, going really, really well. well. Every course is sold out. We were at your, your place in Denver, the gym with Cody. Phoenix, San Jose, Santa Monica. Yeah. San Jose. God damn, Pro $97. Yeah, bargain, man, right? Jeez, it's, what's it come with? A t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, come, it comes with, uh, I mean, you're getting the knowledge how to teach boxing. You know, boxing's the biggest uh, 
workout in the fit. It's going to like a fitness phase now. People, everyone's wanting boxing. Yeah, they want but no mates. fucker knows how to teach. I'm sure you've drove around LA and you've seen personal trainers with a oh, pad. Horrible. Oh, horrible! What they're I, doing when I run Santa Monica stairs, there's some guy at the bottom teaching girls how to box. I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, mm. it's terrible. I literally so, want to be like, here, give me those mates. Look, this is what it looks like. Good yeah, luck. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, your boys are on it. Uh, charge twelve hundred dollars for their certification courses with the kettlebells, and you know. Oh this is, yeah, this straight certification. Yeah, this is a straight certification. So, so you get uh, CEUs from all like NASA and all that. You used to be a NASA certified trainer, right, B? Yeah, hell yeah, I yeah. was. Yeah, so you get continued education units if you complete the course for like all Damn, it's an all day thing too to get, well, obviously if you want to get certified. Yeah, and then we give you access to an online video library with everything you learn on the day as well. That's cool. So, yeah, it's great. It's going really well. Go like, check them out, Phoenix, September 17th. Yeah, and then we put it online. We build in an online certification course. Oh, thank God you uh, you ended at 5 p.m. Because if you were trying to commute with Canelo Triple G, I would... No, this is on Sunday. This is the day after. Yeah. So we could... Oh, it's Sunday. September. Yeah. Let's move. Yeah. Yeah, so we fly down the Saturday and come out on the sun- Sunday. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, it's going to be Good luck, fun. boys. Thanks. Thank you, my man. Appreciate you having you guys on, man. Thanks for having us. Always, mate. Always. Breaking down a little... Tri- so Triple G, Triple G, yeah. Canelo here by decision. But the public's going to be pissed. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. And Thanks hopefully we get the rematch. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Appreciate nice you guys. Nice, nice one. Ba boom. There you have it. Canelo Triple G breakdown here on the Big Brown Breakdown. That makes sense. A lot of breakdown going on. Yeah. Um those guys are good, right? They're amazing. They know their stuff. Glenn's more of a straight boxing head. Obviously Tony fought, so they both have different insights. That's why I like bringing them on when there's a big boxing fight. Those are my go to guys. Um, yeah, it was a fun one. Two in the fights this weekend. You got the UFC on Saturday. You got Fight Night, Rockhold versus Branch on FS1. And then also you have the pay-per-view barn burner. And I'm going to keep saying barn burner. And then I'll retire after the show today. Mm-hmm. You got the UFC. And then you got the boxing barn burner pay-per-view. And Canelo, Triple G. I think these guys um, are going to fight a few times. So this is one of many, but they're going to be classics. It's be a great one. Uh, This Thursday, I'm in San Francisco Cobbs Comedy Club. This Thursday, let's sell that bitch out. There's very few tickets left. TFATK.com. Right now, we have special edition Big Brown Breakdown shirts that are going to be only available in person at the show. So Cobbs Comedy Club this Thursday, San Francisco. Then the following week, Friday night, Friday Nizite. I'm in Long Beach. Next Friday, Nizite. Long Beach Laugh Factory. Get tickets right now. TFATK.com. Dot com. As usual, bigger, browner, badder. I'm out.